Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to our participants. I hope uh, all is well today. And welcome back to the second day of recording in progress. 
on Smart City Platform 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, before the event start, I would like to invite the guests to be seated as the pro program today will begin soon. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, moving forward for the third session, the topic is about integration and sharing of smart city data. This session will co cover the strategy and experiences of member countries on city data sharing and integration. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Kiwon Kim from Telecommunication Technology Association to moderate this session. Please be invited, Mr. Kiwon Kim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's time to start our session. Uh, yesterday, in session two, uh, we dealt with a smart city platform, and we all recognize that the key element of a smart city platform is data. A data centric a uh, smart city platform could make uh, our smart city service more diverse and innovative. So as uh, the, the MC mentioned, uh, this session will cover the strategy and uh, experience of member countries for smart, smart city data sharing and integration. So now uh, we invite uh, the first speaker, uh, Mr. Song Yun Kim. Uh, he will introduce uh, Korean Smart City Data Hub Development and Standardization. Uh, Mr. Kim uh, is a senior researcher of Korea Electronics Technology Institute, we call it KETI. And Mr. Kim has been researching IoT and Smart City Data Platform over 10 years. And he was main software developer of Smart City Data Hub and Data Platform for Korea Smart City and an epidemic investigation support system for COVID-19. So please welcome Mr. Song Yun Kim. Good morning, uh, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen. This is Song Yun Kim from CAT-T, uh, Korea Electronics Technology Institute. Um, today I'm going to share about the Smart City Data Hub and the um, standardization uh, part of the Data Hub. So um, in Korea, we do have project uh, for developing Smart City Data Hub. Uh, so it's almost for five years project. So this is the last year. So I'm gonna share the, what we have done for the Smart City Data Hub platform and the, what we have done for this standardization part also. Uh, next, please. So content is like this. So I'm gonna share the Smart City and data and the Smart City Data Hub and what is this City Data Hub and dissemination and global standardization part. Next. Next. So uh, smart city concept and perspectives. So uh, we have a lot of definitions for this smart city. Uh, in our project, uh, we define like this, uh, digital network uh, cities pursuing the bi-directional data flows on city infrastructures uh, with the ICT technologies to enhance urban administration and the city life qualities. And so, and for the perspectives, we, um, uh, the, the smart city market is really growing really fast. So um, it's, it's, it's almost double uh, when we, uh, in, in 2025 compared to the 2020. Next. Uh, 
as you know, the uh, we really uh, what the, the the importance of the data and the uh, what why we what the data centric smart city is important. And um, uh, because of the data, we can um, manage and solve the uh, different and uh, complex problems of in the city. Uh, in the Barcelona case, uh, they uh, uses um, parking lot sensors and uh, video cameras and lighting culture for the uh, parking lot services uh, based on the data centric uh, solution. Next, please. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we uh, do have a five year project uh, called the National Strategy Smart City Program. Uh, starts from the 2000. Uh, 18 to the 2020, so this is the last year. Um, so what we did in, in this program is to uh, de develop the data-centric smart city implementation and verification in Daegu and Sihung with the smart city data hub core technologies. So the first project uh, in, the, uh, in the center uh, that I associated with, with uh, we developed the smart city model and the core technologies. And based on this uh, uh, result of the project, uh, 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 we will have a, a deployment in Daegu and Xi'an uh, for the uh, second and third project. Next, please. So I'm going to talk about the, what is the smart city data hub uh, that we defined. Next, please. Uh, Smart City Data Hub is the data platform that manages large uh, volume of uh, heterogeneous city data for the data centric smart cities. So uh, in the in the city, we do have legacy, a lot of legacy systems like um, uh, open data portal. It could be the um, IoT platform. Uh, it could be the um, uh, uh, Smart City integrated to platform that we in in the Korea. And a lot of uh, uh, legacy systems there, um, and the Smart City Data Hub collects those data from those data sources, and we can um, make the so that we can make the uh, city Smart City services uh, using that data. So uh, Smart City Data Hub is the plat data platform, also the uh, service enabler for for the Smart City services. Next, please. Uh, so I think the, the one of the most dif difference between the um, uh, smart city platform and the uh, any silo services service platform is that the um, whether they uh, uses uh, single domain data and or multi uh, domain data. So uh, in this figure, as you as you see, um, we do have a lot of um, transportation service and environmental service and the services in city, and the, we collect uh, those data to the smart city data hub. So in the data hub, we have a uh, low data from there, and we can make the mesh up data and the uh, prediction prediction data for the um, uh, other services. So. We could make the uh, cross-domain services like the energy and transportation uh, services and, and environment and transport services. And also, we think that the um, interoperability is really important. Um, so uh, uh, we, we, we adopt Edge NGSLD standard API uh, for the uh, global interoperability. Um, we do have a lot of research on the um, uh, uh, interfaces uh, that what, what we wanted to what we, what we really need to choose, uh, and uh, we found that the uh, HC and just LD is um, really um, uh, I, we think that the, it is a uh, uh, perspective and uh, future API. So we choose the NGS LD for that, and also we uh, we make a standard for the uh, uh, common data models uh, schema for the uh, smart city data. Next, please. So in the data features, uh, we uh, have a lot of features. Um, we, 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 we do have a function to collect 
uh, easily from the IoT, IoT platform and database, etc. And we do have a uh, lot of storages, H RDBMS or HDFS. And also we do have management uh, function uh, to manage data model or uh, schema uh, and data flows that uh, which data need to be stored where and data set, data group uh, management also. And as I, as I mentioned, we adopt a standard API called an HNGSLD uh, to store and the um, uh, exchange data uh, between the platform and the uh, application. And, and we also to have a sandbox uh, functionalities to the, so that uh, so, the, uh, so that the developer can do data analysis. And also we do uh, have a real time and batch AI uh, functionality. And we also do have a data marketplace uh, function and visualization and the semantics and security functionality also. Next. So we define this uh, reference architecture. Uh, Smart City Data Hub has a modular based uh, architecture. So um, we do have a mandatory uh, module and the optional module. And the, um, based on that, uh, the city can uh, choose whatever they want to deploy. Uh, so the main uh, module is is the data core module. Uh, it uh, provides the NGSLD API and data data model API, data model uh, management, data set management, and data lifecycle and the uh, data quality management also. Uh, so the data core module will have the uh, storage uh, uh, and the data ingest module uh, is the adaptation layer for the uh, data 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 hub. So um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, data core module uh, uses ingest LD API. So that means that the uh, data ingest module need to translate. Uh, uh, other interfaces and data to the NGSLD API. So that is what they did in the data ingest module. And now, now we do have our data in the data core module. Uh, based on that data, we can do analytics and data marketplace and semantics uh, services for the um, data uh, uh, smart city services. And we do have security module for the authorization on authentication SSO. And also we do have a cloud management module. Uh, we can uh, choose uh, uh, whether we can use uh, AWS or uh, uh, Microsoft or OpenStack. So uh, each module has uh, its own API. So we also do have so specification, specification for that API, and uh, we do have API gateway to uh, interact with the other uh, application of the uh, Smart City Data Hub. Next, please. So uh, I'm gonna talk about this uh, City Data Hub. Uh, next, please. Yeah, City Data Hub is the Smart City Data Hub reference implementation. Uh, from Cathy that I associated with. Uh, so the um, this is some reference uh, implementation. So it, uh, it that, so so it could be used for the uh, Daegu and Sihung or what uh, other uh, uh, deployment also. So currently we have have two deployments uh, and Korean uh, government thing uh, was to deploy four more in this year. Uh, so. Uh, in this year, we could we could have uh, six deployment in Korea, in province level. Next, please. Uh, so this is the extension features uh, from the Smart City Data Hub. Uh, we City Data Hub um, uh, gives uh, external data integration, so it you could easily. Uh, uh, import legacy data uh, by clicking uh, uh, web-based tool. And also we do have um, uh, 
data model management. Uh, so if you just uh, click some buttons and then you can uh, define the data schema. And if you define the schema, uh, the platform automatically uh, generate the uh, uh, database table and NJSLD API for you. So it means that the what you need to do is to uh, uh, define uh, the schema only, uh, then uh, everything uh, is done in the platform. And also we do have storage, uh, data storage extensions. Currently we support uh, three uh, storage, storages, uh, Postgres SQL at Hive and uh, HBase. So when, when among them, we, you, if you choose uh, among them, uh, we, we just make generate the NGSLT API for you. Uh, and for the uh, visualization and tools we support and AI data analytics that we support also. Next, please. Uh, so uh, we we provide open source. Uh, if you uh, go to the citydatahub.kr, then you can find the open source and uh, monitoring tools and software demo there. But unfortunately, it is written in Korean, so. Uh, sorry for that. Originally, we wanted to use English, but uh, Commons wants to uh, use Korean first, so that is the issue, I think. Next, please. So, uh, dissemination. Next, please. Actually, this is not the uh, smart city uh, service, I think. Uh, but we have pleasure, privilege to uh, deploy uh, Smart City Data Hub to the COVID-19 uh, epidemic investigation support system. Uh, Korean government wants to deploy uh, uh, COVID-19 epidemic investigation support system for three or two or three weeks. So it means that we need to develop uh, that uh, period. So. Uh, thanks to the uh, City Data Hub, uh, we developed, we already developed lots of things. So uh, based on that, we could manage to uh, uh, develop uh, within uh, two or three weeks to support this uh, system. Uh, currently, it, it, it collects a lot of data from the uh, different sources. Uh, it uh, collects uh, card transaction and GPS data from the mobile network operator and the um, QR code tagging that we have in, had in the uh, Korea. And also uh, pres prescription data and the uh, family information and uh, company information and even the uh, entrance and exit of the uh, country. That information goes to the uh, COVID-19 uh, epidemic investigation support system. If the if we got the COVID nineteen, uh, currently we use this, uh, not only the COVID nineteen, uh, but also the uh, monkey fox, monkey pox also. Uh, so it's uh, just um, currently we just um, call it the uh, epidemical investigation support system. So based on those data, we uh, we we generate the. Uh, tracking history of the confirmed cases. So where, where they go, when, like this. And based on those information, uh, we also provide hotspot uh, that the, uh, whether they uh, can uh, contact with the uh, potential, potential uh, 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 confirmed cases. Next, please. Uh, we also do ha have the uh, Probable concept uh, application uh, because the um, data, uh, smart city data platform needs to uh, collect multi domain uh, data. So, uh, what we did is um, uh, collect parking data from the IoT platform and weather information and find dust information. Uh, based on that, uh, we uh, predict uh, parking lot congestion uh, information. So uh, we support currently three uh, parking lot uh, near by the 
our research institute. Next, please. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, this is the last year of this uh, project. So, we need a sustainability plan. Uh, what you need to do is to uh, uh, use the platform that the this is the smart city in integrated platform that you saw yesterday. Uh, and we also uh, have uh, domestic deployments, as I mentioned. We will have four more uh, deployments in this year. Uh, next year, we will have three more. So uh, uh, the de deployments will be in increased. And we do also have a certification program. Uh, we, we will, the certification program will launch in this, 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 this month uh, by TTA. So we do have a certification program and we also do have a global pilot program also. Uh, we did uh, uh, parking lot services in uh, Santander, Spain. And we also uh, do a global sanitation that I I, I think the, I I I, spec, I I specify this more next. And we also the overseas collaboration with the NGSI sanitation, and we also to have open source community. Next, please. So um, this is the what we. Uh, did in global standardization. Next. Uh, so the mission is to reflect the Korean smart city data into global standard and build a standard ecosystem for the smart city data. So uh, I think the um, ecosystem for the uh, standard and uh, open source uh, uh, part is important. What we target is uh, targeting is the uh, HG and TTA. Uh, so the uh, if you see the first one, it, this will be a smart city data of standardization, and we also think that the um, if we deploy the data a lot, uh, the data exchange uh, is needed. So that so we uh, research that part that we call it uh, data of federation, and also uh, as we uh, discussed yesterday. Um, I also think that the data, smart city data platform and IoT platform need to be separated. So that is the reason that we also research on the um, uh, data platform and the uh, uh, IoT platform interworking case. And um, in Korea, we uh, do have smart city data hub and IoT platform and the smart city integration pla inter integrated platform. So. Uh, I think that the um, there's no one solution to there's there's no no only one solution for the smart city. We need to uh, use multiple technologies. So we wanted to uh, research on the we, we we research on the um, uh, smart city integration platform uh, uh, with the smart city data hub iot platform the smart and smart city integrated platform that you saw yesterday and we also uh research on the uh marketplace for the uh data next please so um um data hub uh we uh, data hub uh adopt NGSLD, but uh, NGSLD is just um, one part of the functionality in the um, uh, Smart City Data Hub. So that is the reason, right? That is the reason that we only need to uh, extend uh, NGSLD uh, uh, standardization uh, to align with the uh, Smart City Data Hub. Next, please. And we also uh, want to study on the um, NGSLD uh, interworking uh, exchange uh, among the uh, data hub uh, to exchange between them. Next, please. And also we uh, study on the NGSLD and 1M2M interworking proxy uh, to interact with the IoT platform and the data platform. So next, please. So that's all for this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for very much for your uh, 
uh, uh, participation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Uh, uh, he introduced and shared uh, the Korean uh, semantic data uh, hub and some use cases. So now I'd like to open the floor. So any question for his presentation? Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, just a simple question. Uh, in the slide number 13, uh, you did mention about certification of the uh, Smart City Data Hub. Uh, can you further explain on the certification? It is, is it referring to the... Uh, uh, in Malaysia, we have a data center uh, certification as well. It's called a tier system. So whether it is the same or... Uh, thank you. So uh, in our... Data Hub certification program. Uh, we uh, certified whether they uh, are support uh, NGSLD uh, API uh, compatible with the standard. So that is the uh, one thing. And also we also uh, do the uh, function check the functionality also. So. Uh, uh, in in data we do have a lot of uh, functionalities and and the um uh, we also cert certify that the uh, which data support which functionalities so those two part are the in the uh, standardization uh, uh, certification scope thank you and any other questions So we have uh, four minutes, so I'd like to uh, ask one question. So when you develop a smart, uh, smart city data hub platform, so what was the most uh, important uh, element and factor you uh, considered? Uh, so um, when we meet, when I meet met the um, uh, the uh, person person who is in charge of the big data platform in city, uh, they struggle with the uh, new data types. So what I, what I mean is that the, um, if they wanted to support uh, 10 more data type uh, with the API, then they need to de develop uh, those things with their money. That is the, one of the crucial thing, I think, for, uh, for uh, uh, for future work. So what I did is that the um we don't in, in the data hub we we don't need uh, that uh, that part. We you just uh, define the schema, then everything is done in the platform. Uh, platform generate data table for you and also generate for API for you. So it means that the uh, there's no uh, money. Uh, to uh, add new data type and APIs for the um, data platform. Okay, thank you. And another question? So, yes, please. Good morning. Uh, I have a question about uh, how, how to motivate uh, the the organization to share the data. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, his question is how to motivate uh, other organizations to share their their own data. Is it correct? Um, mostly the legacy system is owned by the uh, city. So the city has the power to do that. So, uh, yet if the uh, city has the will to do that, then it it is not no difficulties to exchange those data. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kim. Uh, it's, oh, it's, it's another question.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Director. I'm happy. Uh, Thank you, uh, moderator. I'm Hasnita. Related with the question, I also want to know what kind of engagement you deal with uh, with the uh, public or uh, what kind it changed the mic okay okay thank you uh, again the question very simple uh, related from that uh, sharing data information, so you want to gather all the data. So what kind of engagement you deal with the uh, business partner or community to gather all the data, then, get, then uh, they can uh, use the data for this smart city program. Maybe you uh, awareness program uh, to get all the data from the business partner. So what kind of engagement you did? Thank you. Uh, so, um, if the legacy system is uh, owned by the city, then it is no issue uh, with the um, uh, interworking. The, the problem is that the, uh, if the city wants to get uh, um, data from the private company, um, in that case, uh, in, in Korea, the city uh, uh, make a project. project. Uh, and give the budget to the uh, uh, private company, and then we can use that data for the uh, city services. Is is that what you questioned? <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have more question, so please contact him. To ask a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I'd like to wrap this uh, presentation, his, his session. So uh, please uh, give him a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, next speaker uh, is um, Mr. Uh, Wan Sok Chang. I uh, will introduce a uh, smart city platform for Korean National Smart City pilot project. Uh, he will make a presentation virtually. So, Is it online? Hi, good morning. Okay, Mr. Chang. Uh, so, wait a moment. Uh, I'll introduce uh, Mr. Chang uh, shortly. Uh, Mr. Chang, I want to Chang, is a principal strategy planner in NGCNS Korea. Uh, he, uh, he has been working in NGCNS since 2002 and he's leading a number of national projects in Korea, such as establishing the pre design of smart services for Sejong and Busan National Pilot Project, uh, Pilot Smart City, and the pre design for Chang Smart City Challenge, the uh, systematic design for national disaster and safety communication network. Also, he uh, has been participating in a number of global projects, mm -hmm. uh, establishing the basic plan for the intelligent transportation system in. New Nations Capital of Indonesia and the Master Plan for National ICT Project of Cambodia, etc. So please welcome Mr. Chang. Mr. Chang, who is yours? Hi, good morning. You can proceed. My voice is clear. This is okay. Thank you. 
Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Tan. We can hear you, but um, uh, my colleagues in Malaysia are having some issues, so and we'll just be back shortly. Thank you. Please wait a second uh, to fix. Uh, uh, it, it take time to fix it. So Okay, I'm sorry, there's a technical problem in my presentation. So uh, from now on, I'm started to my presentation. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm Wonsok Chang from LG CNS. Uh, it's great, a pleasure to share our experience to APT members. Uh, today, I'm going to present it ab about the plan of the smart city platform. Uh, especially, I wanted to focus on the uh, smart, uh, national pilot smart city project in Korea. Uh, before my pre presentation, uh, I would like to introduce LGCNS briefly. Uh, LGCNS is one of the giant tech company in Korea. Mm -hmm. Last year, our revenue was 3.4 billion US dollars, and we are the number one uh, smart city solution provider in Korea. So, LGCNS has uh, contributed to the success of Korea's uh, smart city project in Sejong, Cheongna, Songdo, and Seoul Magusi smart city. Also, as CNS has a lot of uh, references uh, regarding to smart city in global, and not just in Korea. As you can see on this slide, we have successfully carried out uh, a lot of projects in various domains, such as transportation, energy, smart building, smart factory, e-government, and healthcare. References include the country of the APT members, uh, such as Malaysia, as well as China, Japan, Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Laos, Philippines, New Zealand, and so on. And then from the next slide, let me uh, present to you about the plan of smart city platform in Korea. First, I will explain smart city policy in Korea. This is because you need to understand the uh, direction of the Korea smart city policy to better understand the platform uh, which we are making. <clears throat> in Korea, according to the Smart City Act, a smart city is defined as a sustainable city <clears throat> that provides the smart urban infrastructure and service using digital technology. However, from the view of policy, a smart city is being promoted as a city as a platform. Smart city as a platform is not outcome, but a process and vehicle uh, to change the system life and solve urban issues through the digital transport transformation. So we believe that smart cities as a platform consist of a service, infrastructure, and platform. Therefore, the smart city platform should be able to connect service and infrastructure as well as collect and process data. I think the smart city platform should be the technical ecosystem vehicle to make the better service and infrastructure. 
In Korea, smart city is not the new concept that has emerged recently. Uh, since the early 2000s, the Korean government has promoted smart city projects as known as UCT projects uh, by applying ICT to uh, technology to the city infrastructure. And as the first industrial revolution emerges, the Korean government is promoting smart city projects in earnest uh, through uh, revising the UC Tech to Smart City Tech in 2017. After that, in 2018, the Korean government and TTA first started to certify a private com uh, company solution for the Smart City integration platform. And LG Shen is the, one of the first company, eight companies to get the certification from TTA and uh, the only big IT service company. Then the next slide, we will, I will explain the, what the difference is the, between UCT and Smart City. The table on this slide shows you the difference between the UCT and Smart City. As you can see on this slide, the UCT project focuses on uh, building information and communication infrastructure. Unlike the UCT project, uh, the smart city project focuses on the uh, smart service oriented project uh, using advanced technology uh, such as IoT, AI, big data, and something like that. So it focuses on the <clears throat> smart city platform and database city operation. Uh, the next slide shows you what Korean government has planned to develop smart city as a platform. The Korean government has been establishing a comprehensive smart city plan at the national level to systematically develop smart city. And local government are establishing their own plan, smart city plan under the national comprehensive plan. <clears throat> Last slide figure show you the vision and its initiatives to promote smart city in Korea national comprehensive plan. There are four strategies and 14 initiatives, and the national flagship projects are the core of the initiatives. And then I will explain the, this project on the next slide. Korean government established customized the model for the, each stage of the city growth life, life cycle. We are promoting the national pilot project for the green field and the challenge and the vitalization project for the brownfield and old town. Anyway, national pilot project and challenge project are designed to create a future city model and to solve urban issues with the digital transformation. LHGNS participated in and leads the two national pilot projects at the most representative Korean government project. Both projects are under planning. So from next slide, I will explain the plan of the smart city platform for the, those, this project. Sejong is the administrative capital of Korea. Sejong National Pilot Project is being carried out in the five Dash one living area, a district area of the Sejong city. The project area is the 2.74 million uh, square meter and the budget is 2.5 billion US dollars. Uh, this project will provide a uh, total 21 services in five different domains to change and improve the quality of citizen life. So it focuses especially on the platform as well as the mobility service. Busan is the second uh, biggest metropolitan city in Korea. Uh, Busan National Pilot Project is being carried out uh, in the Echo Delta district of the Busan city. So why we call it this project the Busan Echo Delta Smart City Project? The project area is 2.77 billion square meter and budget is 4.8 billion US dollars. Uh, this project is designed with the uh, total 
25 services and to add a new value to city in life and develop the inno innovative business friendly cities. It is also focused on, especially on the platform as well as the energy and healthcare services. Uh, from next slide, I show you uh, the keywords of the national pilot project plan related to the smart platform. The first is smart technology based smart city. As you know, as you know well, uh, in most cities, there is a disconnect between the spaces and the technology. The National Smart City pilot project is trying to directly build and operate innovative commercial and residential zones through applying smart city service to the city within project area. And each space will embrace diverse functions of the city and city needs. For example, to create the future smart mobility model in city, the Dejan project is planning to special zone where private-owned cars are prohibited. So smart city platform should be able to support the connection between the cars and space. The second is smart service-oriented smart service. Smart city. In order to innovate the lifestyle of the citizen and promote the growth of the city, the project is planned to provide innovative services that change citizen life style by using digital transformation, such as a robot, AI, and virtual reality. This slide shows how smart services are planned to be implemented throughout the project area. Especially smart city, smart service oriented smart city uh, means smart city as a service. Instead of solving the urban problem with the hardware oriented approach, such as uh, consulting additional uh, roads and increase the number of the transportation road buses, the project is planning to promote a service oriented smart city that can solve the problem and respond demands of the city through the software and service. Mass, mobility service. Mass is the most representative service as a service in city. Instead of increasing transportation, mass provides convenient integrated service for citizens by connecting all of the transportation into the one application and it works uh, as a mobile service platform. So smart city platform should be able to support and connect to the service platform and services. The third keyword is the data-driven smart city. Data-driven smart city means a city operated by data. For data-based operation of smart service and city, the project is planned to build an open smart city platform that combines combines IoT, AI, data, data clean, and cybersecurity technology to provide the necessary platform, platform functions for data collection, storage, analysis, and utilization. And smart city platform should provide a consumer-oriented service model by integrating and uh, linking each service and help seamless data sharing between services in different domain such as mobility, energy, and healthcare. As I told you, the smart city platform helps the database city operation. The first project is planned to implement a smart, smarter city through optimization and prediction as well as real-time monitoring and response by using smart city data. So rather than focusing on the data collection and storage, uh, smart city platform should, should focus more on the analysis and use of the data. For better service, it is necessary to share pro uh, private domain data as well as the uh, public domain data. The project is planned to uh, provide personalized, intelligent, and optimized services by uh, converting uh, 
conversing private and public data on the open smart city platform. So smart city platform should be supported to collect uh, private domain data and promote the data eco ecosystem. The next key keyword is sustainable city. In order to create a sustainable city, a smart city platform should support flexibility, flexibility uh, service in and out. It will help smart city to fund the change of the city demand and technology trends and resolve new urban problems. As you know well, standards have to ensure flexibility and interoperability for smart city platform and systems. So, sustainable city should be a standardized city that com comprises and leads a global standard. Then, from next slide, I will explain the smart city platform in this case. This slide show you the architecture of the smart city platform for the national pilot project. As you can see, uh, the smart platform consists of um, IoT platform for data collection and AI data hub platform for the data storage and analysis and data team extended reality platform for, for data utilization. In addition, it is implemented a cyber security platform uh, function for the data needs and protection of the data. And smart city platform is developed as an open platform so that various technologies or the data can be collected in the future. So, let me show you the details of each service platform function from the next slide. The first is a platform for collecting data. As you shown in this figure on the left, uh, IoT platform consists of data collection, event processing, processing, platform core, and management components. The platform should support its easy registration and management of data collection, uh, data collection objectives, such as service devices and facility as well as sensors. Uh, to this end, the platform should support a variety of interface protocols and flexible structure for spending new set sensors and service devices like the robot. In addition, the platform should support event processing so that uh, it can efficiently expand to events in real time based on data. The second is AI data platform. As pre previously presented by KT, uh, this platform is for the efficient data storage and effective data analysis. So this platform consists of integrated data lake for reliable storage of large scale urban data and AI big data analytics platform for complex AI analysis and research. And the uh, AI Data Hub platform of the National Pilot Project is implemented to support data driven smart city operation. Uh, to this end, uh, this platform will provide the following services. The first is response to the operation based on real time data monitoring, such as finders or, or um, traffic accident. The second is optimizing city operation based on the data analytics, such as public transportation route and uh, safety planning. The third is the proactive city operation based on simulation prediction, uh, such as the flow, flow, flow uh, simulation. The last is the platform support citizen and how to test for city operation based on the data open and utilization. For data open and utilization, AI data platform provides data ecosystem model. Data ecosystem models provide the function to share and trade value of data asset, uh, discover and commercialize the new data through the combination of the data from various domains, uh, such as mobility, energy, and healthcare, and save and distribute the commercialized data. To this end, the AI data hub platform should support uh, various, various types of data products 
as you can see on the, uh, this slide. Uh, to enhance data utilization, GitaTwin is provided as a sub platform or smart grid platform. As you can, as you know well, uh, GitaTwin platform is very helpful in vitalizing data, visualizing data, and analyzing data to identify the cause of the urban issues and doing simulations such as disaster prevention. To this end, we plan to implement the platform so that uh, the other data can be combined uh, centered on the special data. To enable citizens to conveniently use data, the SMASI platform provides an extended reality platform. We plan to provide the extended reality platform so that citizens can use the and um, experience CD data on the uh, various device such as mobile and data signage. And to this end, the platform is implemented the technology such as RK, APS, and 5G to provide precise location-based service. There are several uh, technical requirements for smart city platforms to operate more efficiently effectively. Uh, from next slide, I will explain the technical consideration. <clears throat> this slide shows you uh, a part of the data collecting process. A smart city platform collects uh, and sources and stores uh, most of the data in format that come from to different global standards depending on their usage. Uh, the platform collects data from the various sources in different data structure and during the storing process, we transform the structure into the, this standard so that we can easily interface this data between the services. Um, for 3D, 3D special data used to, in digital screen service, we use the PTGML and indoor GML format. The data for semantic coding are stored as NGS LD data. And data from the IoT device are converted into one end to end format. And data harvested from the other open data quota use DCAD standard. All these data formats are widely used global standard and as you know where. And then uh, therefore it makes our platform easily to interface with other system of Korea and global type, global open quota. In order to expand the data to collective, we are expanding the linkage through the cooperation with the data on agents. We are discussing collaboration with the agents on how to connect, such as define data type, to publish operational model which use with linkage password, as well as expanded data platform and connecting with the agency gradually. As an interface protocol standard, we adopt a REST API based data communication. However, it supports uh, various interface protocols such as uh, SOAP, SOCKET, and DB2DB, depending on the similar situation uh, with the existing the legacy system. And also, we support uh, FP for large volume data transformation. In order to thank uh, the database city operation, uh, it is so most important to protect safely the city data. We plan to especially protect personal privacy data through the applying machine learning techn technique and specialized tools, as well as uh, build security system that can be can respond to risk factors such as IoT bias, uh, complicated data links. In addition, all smart city platform and services are designed by private cities. Finally, I would like to introduce LGCN smart city platform solution. We call this sol solution as CD Hub. Uh, CD Hub is a solution, a brand name that combines city and data hub. 
they have provided uh, essential functions need to implement the smart city platform I have been talking about so far. It provides functions for data collection and analysis, as well as the function for city operation and data open. In addition, we are providing services for integrated service channels. Above all, DT Hub uh, ensures high scalability by following the global standard and supporting over 100 protocols, flex, and open data. In addition, uh, the various functions shown in, in the previous slide can be implemented as modules customized to the needs of the city. As you can see on this slide, by implementing city hub, a city operator can be provided with a more convenient and analytical service needed for the city operation. A city hub is a powerful solution to create your smart city. Uh, I've told you the, all of the credentials I prepared for today. Uh, thank you for your listening so far. Thank you. Mm, so, so, uh, uh, thank you for serving the National uh, Smart City Pilot Project in Korea and also various technology platform uh, supporting Smart City platform. So, would like to open the floor. So, is there any question for his presentation? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Morato. I must be again. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate the current uh, government because I think your smart city program is very successful. So the question is, um, have you, uh, what kind of negotiation or engagement the community to uh, the uh, acceptance uh, program. Maybe we have the rejection at the early stage, and how do you have that rejection? This one, thank you. I'm sorry, there is a the technical problem to listen to your session. So please uh, repeat it and what the, the moderator, please the, uh, translate the, the question where the Uh, Mr. Zhang, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, our question is, how can the government persuade the city to join the program? And also, if the, uh, the, the city government, my, my understanding is correct? Sorry, maybe I uh, speak very fast. Uh, I just want to know whether you, when we deal with community, maybe we have re a rejection from them. So what kind of awareness program would you have this rejection? So when we produce a thing, we hope people can accept our product. So how you deal with community? We can accept our product to use this smart city program and all the initiative. So maybe you can uh, explain about the level of acceptance community. Actually, uh, I'm sorry to. Uh, I cannot understand what your uh, question is very clear, uh, 100%. So, could you replace your question? Let me try to enlighten what uh, Madam Hasnita have asked, uh, but I do believe these are probably as beyond the um, uh, jurisdiction of LGCNS as well. But 
the question is about, uh, of course, as you, we want to implement a smart city. Engagement with the community is very important. And uh, definitely in the initial stage, there will be resistance from the community. So uh, probably this is a very generic question. Um, what kind of engagement that the Korean government have taken into place uh, probably try to sort uh, this kind of resistance, probably in terms of deployment of the technology and uh, acceptance of any certain uh, services uh, in the digital transformation uh, in the smart city perspective. Uh, as far as I as far as I understand, your question is how to government to make the citizens to uh, attend the program, the involvement of citizens to the program. Okay. Yes, I understand the question. So uh, as you comment, uh, there is uh, some distance to take the new technology or the smart city services. But uh, uh, as you know well, the Korean uh, government tried to the uh, the technology oriented services for a long time. So, uh, for example, e government system is uh, we provide the citizen for for twenty years over over twenty years. And so, uh, in Korea, the uh, many citizen is uh, very familiar to uh, take the new technology for the their uh, lifetime. So anyway, uh, we try to the citizen to to participate in the smart city plan in early stage. So uh, as you know well, we try to the living lab or the something like the community program to uh, to 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 participate uh, to promote it, the participation of citizen for smart city platform and uh, smart city program, and then. Uh, uh, the national pilot project is try to the uh, uh, to make the living lab or the community for the smart city uh, plan. So nowadays we uh, already we make the, some community for the smart city national smart city project. So uh, it is very important to the citizen participation in the smart city plan in early stage. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. uh, we sometimes uh, misunderstand the certain words uh, by uh, looking the context of our own. I just understood the words. Uh, okay, any, any other comments for this uh, presentation? If not, uh, I'd like to ask one question, last one question to him. Uh, Mr. Sam, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Ah, yes. Uh, so you explained that uh, smart platform these uh, various sub platforms such as IoT and this this uh, thing. So outside of those technology you explained today, uh, are they are there any other uh, technologies that should be considered as a platform supporting smart city platform? Okay, uh, that's very interesting question. Uh, in addition to what I have mentioned today, uh, another tech, uh, important thing to consider is the blockchain. Uh, as you know, well, uh, blockchain is very uh, useful to the uh, association and uh, payment, uh, such as DID. So uh, I think blockchain is the the so one other, another the important technology for the smart city platform. And then um, one more thing is the cloud. 
uh, as you know well, the cloud is the infrastructure for smart cities. So cloud, cloud technologies should be considered uh, to the smart city platform. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, one more question. Sorry, one last question, because uh, I think it's very interesting to look at the slide number six, uh, where I, I, because uh, all this while I was wondering whether, uh, especially Plan Asia is on the right directions in terms of uh, assisting the uh, local government uh, in preparing their smart city plan. So if I look at the slide number six, uh, in Malaysia as well, we have the, uh, the uh, national government strategy on smart city called Malaysian Smart City Framework. Uh, can the secretariat open the slide number six as well uh, for the reference of the rest of the participant? So at the local government level, I do believe that in, in Korea, uh, there is one statement here mentioned that each local government is recommended to establish uh, its own plan for the smart city. So I guess it is almost similar to Malaysia that uh, the strategy that we have now. Uh, my question is uh, whether this uh, plan at the local government le level is very uh, extensive enough uh, to include the strategy on the smart city platform. Because I, I try to read uh, and refer to a few documents, uh, but unfortunately, most of the document in the Korean language, so I couldn't uh, understand. So, but if uh, Mr. Chang have uh, referred to this document at, in Korea, whether they are included as well uh, the smart city platform strategy and also the up to the detail of the architecture and uh, etc because in malaysia we just focus more on the uh, the challenges and technology being adopted to uh, mitigate the urban challenges so i would like to know because i think this is going to be a way forward for us as well uh, for us to go for the uh, planned version um, uh, version 2.0 or 3.0 or and uh, beyond thank you thank you for your question uh, this very uh, important question uh, uh, as you mentioned the local government is uh, recommended to establish a smart city plan for their own uh, for their own city but uh, until now, unfortunately, the local government, the uh, local government plan is not. Uh, they are, they are, they are, uh, They don't uh, include the smart city platform for their smart city because, um, uh, as you know well, the smart city platform is is under uh, planning or the under developing. So, uh, the local government plan is uh, establishes. Uh, four or three or five years ago. So at that time, the, the local government plan don't, don't, uh, didn't uh, include the smart city platform for their city. So uh, I hope the, uh, the next uh, uh, national smart city comprehensive, comprehensive plan to in, in uh, at the next year. Uh, so after that, uh, many smart uh, local government in Korea uh, should uh, would, would uh, include uh, the smart city platform plan in their own plan. So, but uh, besides the, this local government plan, uh, the, the many local government agency try to the, accept the smart city platform for their um, their own local uh, their, uh, local government their own project. So, uh, so uh, the. Uh, so many government, local government uh, nowadays try to uh, make the, the smart city platform their service. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zhang. Uh, thank you for your presentation and your time. So please uh, give him a, a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, now this is, is it time for one coffee break, so you can take a 15 minutes coffee break and resume our session at 11 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Kevin King, for the moderating this session. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the morning coffee break, there's an announcement here to, to the car owner with the plate number ST1966. Your car window is not closed, and please take immediate action for that. Thank you. And now we will have a short morning coffee break, and we will start promptly after the coffee break at 11 a.m. and we'll continue from the previous session. Thank you and enjoy your refreshment. Recording stopped.
Uh, we will resume our session shortly, so please take a seat, please. Recording in progress. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum semua. Sesi kita akan bermula sekarang. We will start now. Selamat kepada semua peserta. Sesi kita akan bermula sekarang. Terima Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will begin the second half of our session. So, the second half of session will begin with a presentation about uh, local challenges in smart city platform and data integration by Datuk Nick Ahmad Pfizer. Uh, please invite uh, uh, I'm going to invite uh, to uh, Nick Ahmad Pfizer. So I introduce him. Uh, Atung Nick Ahmad Pfizer has uh, over 25 years of uh, industry and government experience in policy, strategic, and sectoral development and high impact project. And with 10 years of smart city experience since the early government initiation in 2011. And he has led the implementation of national, state, and local level smart city initiatives, including corporate planning, implementation planning, action plan, blueprint development, data policies, and management, business modeling, and integrated operation center for smart city. Before his efforts in smart cities, he was awarded most impactful smart city leaders at the World Smart Cities Congress, uh, Mumbai, in February 2018. Uh, Datung Nick is currently the director of the City Nexus company and corporate advisor to strategic companies in smart city implementation through PPP with governments. Uh, please welcome Datung Nick.
Assalamualaikum. Very good morning. Thank you very much for the introduction and also the organizer for inviting me today for uh, sharing uh, more or less some experience how Malaysia has progressed in smart city. This is my, my personal capacity since 2011. We started the initiative. Uh, then uh, 2015, we start uh, uh, moving into more seriously leading to the 2019 where thanks to plan Malaysia that, that, that has come up with came up with the upper uh, the plan uh, smart city blueprint eh, at the national level so how many years already because 2019 four five years then so now it's about implementation eh? so uh, I'm now basically more focused uh, back in private sector uh, from government, uh, focusing on implementation, which is our key challenges in Malaysia now. So we start the slide. Huh? Uh, next. Go on. Do I need to press from here? Wireless. Ah, oh, sorry. Go back. All right. Just to give you some context of the uh, smart city. So uh, Malaysia had this sub experience uh, uh, through involvement with uh, UN UNIDO, United Nations Development Organization, on the National uh, Sustainable City Program. That was in 2016 to 2021. And uh, then the, the key message in this program was for the SDG 11, you need a holistic and integrated approach. Because this new area, a lot of components involved uh, that needs uh, change management, that needs uh, requirement to go beyond as usual. So this is very critical that to adopt the integrated holistic approach. Uh, next. And uh, as you're aware, being a developing country, Malaysia is a three-tier government. A lot of policies uh, through federal government, a lot of blueprints and so forth. But the key impact is at state and local level. The bottom half of the country is very crucial that uh, you need to be uh, engaged and then uh, be the driver for the smart city implementation. So the ball actually with the state government and local government's court. So whatever state local government down there, the ball is in your court actually to drive huh? because the, the policy, the authority, if the, uh, these two governments. Next. And we all know that 80% uh, of the economy from cities. Eh? So it's very crucial, the role of uh, to progress the digital economy rests on the state and local government. Okay. So now is that how to actually uh, get other partners to come in because the government alone cannot deliver with limited resources and limited capacity. Yet at the same time, cities facing these uh, climate challenges and then almost the same figure, GHG emission level increase. Okay, so the issue here with the country, like Malaysia being a developing country, as we grow, our emission grow. So we not this dismantling between uh, growth and emission, which is what we call uh, green growth. So there's no pathway being defined yet between growth and emission level. So being at city level, 80% is of growth is there. So very crucial that city level, uh, good that now at the federal level, local level, you have the low carbon city program, but are we measuring or targeting at least annually. Currently, we don't have an annual target of JG emission level against economic growth at local level. So that is one of the key gaps also in the country. Next. So on moving forward, uh, like any other new area, emerging areas, this three P is very consistent. Policy, program, project. You cannot run away from that. <laughs> So, in a way, it's that holistic integrated approach that we need to adopt. Next. So, those are basically the context of which uh, 
I will go through the presentation. Eh? So we cover in three parts. One is the smart city ecosystem. And then uh, from the certain ecosystem point of view, we'll deep dive into the challenges that we are facing and then possible next steps. I'm giving a neutral perspective, eh? not representing any companies, but where Malaysia is now and how we need to move forward. Next. So firstly, on the smart city ecosystem, next. right. Uh, sorry, bad word. All right. So we need to systemize because smart city, there's a lot of elements. Huh? So the more we able to systemize, the more we can align collaboration, talk process, partnership, trust, and many other things. So alignment is very, very crucial towards implementation. So because not one party can deliver the, the agenda. Eh? So first, we have to start with policy. Eh? So policy, as you, as you know, uh, where that national the framework, thanks to Plan Malaysia, has launched in 2019. And subsequent to that, some state government have developed the blueprints of late latest in Johor done by Plan Malaysia also. And some city has carried out the five-year action plan at local level, uh, which some city go beyond just smart city, they call it smart and low carbon city, which is a more a, a holistic approach in terms of addressing economy and emission. Okay, and also one key important element is the data policies. Because if there's no data sharing culture, then what's the point? Because the, the, the oil for smart city is data. So without uh, data, you cannot play the game. Yeah. So this is very key. Yeah? So policy is one thing. Next is the projects. As you can see there, there are seven elements of the uh, smart cities. And these are very key elements to actually create impact on the ground. Next. Now, to bridge between policy and project, you need programs. Because programs are to sustain uh, various multi-activities, to sustain the, the agenda with multiple projects. So at the program level, there are five key components. Okay. Five key components uh, in, involving uh, the Integrated Operation Center, Data Management and Technologies, Program Delivery Office, Innovation Hub, and Program Enablers. So the way I feel we need to define Smart City Platform are, there are tech-based platform and non-tech-based platforms. So, so this is a five essential platforms for Smart City, right? And then the, and then the meaning that for the government, by virtue of having a, a proper plan and then data policies, then you can have a forward-looking government to get, I say the government readiness to partner with private sector. Currently, uh, the readiness of government, private sector on the supply side is ready with technology and funding. But government is at certain level. We need to elevate to certain level so that both can collaborate. That is very urgent now. Yeah. But more importantly, is that the impact of smart city is digital economy. If currently in Malaysia, what we have now at the lower level here, at the project level, a lot of silent project as usual, uh, with various things, but it needs to be, I think we have sufficient in Malaysia, uh, sufficient use case, sufficient project at various cities already. Now it's about time for, for cities to move by level up creating as a program. So that once you have a program, then various partners alignment can happen and then planning can happen. For, for, this, for example, if you have a five-year action plan, private sector can plan your business plan. So alignment is very, very critical for implementation. So this is the, the, the context of systemizing uh, smart city. Eh? Next. Now, in Malaysia, when coming to policies, as you can see there, we are quite advanced 
in making blueprints document. I really know that, <laughs> Malaysia. So we have uh, 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 sufficient document to actually implement. But the issue here is whether it is actionable or not. This is very, very key. For example, data policies. Uh, I work with uh, uh, some uh, private sectors working with American counterpart. Uh, in America, they have local council have chief data officers. Okay, so working with few former chief data officer, and then when they, we developing uh, uh, the for our pilot of one of the private sector working pilot at the in Patapaha, for instance. Uh, so the, we have developed uh, the the data policy that they have looked at the current policies at the federal level. So some element is not that actionable. So it need to be grounded and then uh, uh, workable, practical by the local authorities. So we are behind on data policies. That actually, so meaning that data policy is a state government jurisdiction. So if we can actually address this at the state level, then local level can actually start applying it accordingly. All right. Uh, at the program level, we have start at the early stage of. I will see some state has started already the IOCs uh, in certain way or another. Data management technology community is still very early stage as well as program delivery office. Program delivery office is very key. Uh, as you can see yesterday, uh, Thailand has progressed through the smart city office. Okay, uh, So those are the kind of role that we need uh, in Malaysia. Uh, and also to sustain the growth in smart city, we need a pipeline of innovation to the market. Eh? That's where we need innovation hub. It's very crucial, crucial to actually deliver the game. Eh? And program enablers, government have lots of enablers. Entrepreneurship, talent, you name it. <laughs> but all of these things at the periphery. So it's not coordinated. Eh? So that is, is very key also. So this kind of a quick snapshot on where Malaysia is now. And the capability at the ground level is there with private sector and partnership with cities. So quite advanced on the ground. Next. So the surgery approach that we see here is the, at the policy level, it required very important policy planning uh, in terms of the need for program-based program initiative at the national level. Uh, because Plan Malaysia, I was made to understand, is basically policy-driven. So indeed, the Plan Malaysia needs a partner at the program level to actually drive this, uh, a private sector partner-driven. At the program level, you need program planning. What's happening when? Do we know? <laughs> we don't know yet in Malaysia. Do you know what's happening? What's the plan for next year? in Johor, in Penang, and so forth, so that private sector can come in with necessary uh, solutions. We don't have that visibility. <laughs> and how one city can collaborate to the other? Data management planning, technology innovation planning, funding planning. Uh, we have lots of funders approaches, uh, approach me also in the past, uh, from outside Malaysia. Where to pump investment into Malaysia? Is there such a platform? There's none yet. So that's why it's very, very critical to do it. And then capacity planning, where are the needs of capacity planning, tal talent building and so forth. Especially in data, government have been producing a lot of, of, of uh, uh, fresh graduates uh, uh, upskilling them into data. But the main gap here is the middle management on data, not the, the precious. So those are the, the gap that we need to be uh, coordinated uh, at, at the program level. Next, let's move on to the implementation approach. Obviously, policy needs to be government-driven, government-enabled. <laughs> Projects, public-private-driven. But at city program level, it needs, still needs to be public-private-driven. Why? Because the key component of the most important of the five items is the data management and technology. This reside with private sector now. Government do not have the capability. So, like it or not, the government has no choice. You 
have to partner with a private sector. Private sector, to do what I call it, a program delivery partner. If you remember those days, a few years ago, it's like commando on the ground. They understand partner. You need that one partner to plan it together, deliver on the ground with various ecosystem coming in. Okay. So that's where the, the partner program to partner with data management and tech-based digital platforms. Those are partners that you need to deliver the smart city program. So this is the on implementation. So from private sector perspective, next, the middle part, the program part is now is greenfield in Malaysia. The greenfield uh, whereby the brown field is, there's a lot of capabilities, a lot of active activities at the project level. So uh, a lot of investment actually can come in at the middle part also in Malaysia. Next. So uh, through the digital economy blueprint, government is advocating now uh, promoting cloud-based services. Eh? So here at the project level, we already have software as a service. Now we need to intensify infrastructure as a service. Uh, beyond fiber, such as smartphone, uh, uh, API as a service, and so forth. So that is still uh, not really uh, booming in Malaysia yet. Eh? Those are the new potential. But in the middle also, there are a few business uh, opportunities uh, uh, through program as a service, meaning that uh, you, uh, partnering with uh, 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 private sector to drive the smart city program. Uh, platform as a service for data integration, data processing, and data as a service provide uh, services, data services and reporting to the various interested stakeholders. Eh? So there are new business model that, that is happening now overseas, but uh, not fully uh, explored yet in Malaysia. Next. There are now, uh, it's, to me, uh, private sector role is very key. So it's not a race among private sector to come in uh, fast into supporting the government agenda. So uh, at this project level, uh, uh, appreciation to the Malaysia Smart City Alliance Initiative, where they have bring together various private sector together in more coordinated manner to actually drive at the project level. But at the platform level, uh, capability is still not much uh, there. Uh, so far, from my observation, there could be other company. map to you has the opportunity, a company which is uh, doing for the Plan Malaysia, uh, the Malaysian Urban Observatory. One of the key component is the smart city platform with data analytics. That giving the the next capability of map to you actually move into that space under data management and technology. Kiwi Tech is a company where has the experience through the Sarawak uh, Smart City project with Sarawak uh, Multimedia Authority, being a consultant there, uh, overseeing the delivery of the smart city platforms and now moving into a personalization of the that. So, uh, so far uh, that I can see now, but there could be others coming and so forth. So, IT Max, probably some of you are aware, uh, these are the opportunities smart city for private sector uh, to actually uh, create growth in their companies also. So, this opportunity for companies through Smart City uh, doing fundraising through, to, to, towards a public-private partnership project. So IT Max now, uh, close to today actually, they are being now listing themselves uh, today officially closed. I on 13, they are listed on the BUSA, uh, local stock exchange, uh, raising about 300 million to achieve a 1B uh, capital. So, so companies now start uh, doing fundraising uh, 
in the local uh, star exchange to actually raise the uh, initiative in smart city to partner with the governments. Eh? So hopefully more and more companies now moving towards that direction. So those are basically the, the overview on the smart city elements. Eh? I'll move on to the next deep dive on challenges. Eh? Next. So as you can see here, there are five key challenges uh, here. One on the smart digital infrastructure. Why? Because of the speed of demand and solution coming in and the speed of popularization support, IT internet support to meet the market needs. Eh? So that is one uh, challenge. The second innovation hub that I was mentioning, uh, how to create a neutral platform for various parties take out their head. You're not local council, you're not government. We are here, here together to deliver the program. So you need this innovation hub to create, a, to neutralize uh, various interests. Third one is data management and technology. As I mentioned also, current capability does not reside with government. It's with private sector. The gap now is that partnership between these two, how to come in and work together to raise services. Uh, fourth is IOC, so Integrated Operation Center. It's something nice to have. Some state, I will not mention what, uh, some state got excited about IOC, they be IOC first. But they don't have data management foundation. As a result, they cannot operate IOCs. Foundation for IOC is data management and, and tech-based uh, digital platform to support the operationalization. So those are very important uh, foundation. So after you have this uh, data management technology that you can have that IOC, and then lastly, data policy, as I mentioned just now. So the key gaps. Huh? So I will deliberate a bit some of these boxes. Next. Uh, okay. The gap now here is between telcos and the demand side. That course is on the supply side. Eh? So the city, the local government, the demand planning. The issue in Malaysia here is that telco always wait and see. There's development only then they come in. So what we have need now for smart city, a proactive approach where we have to actually share the demand uh, planning together with working together with telcos. If there's no delivery office, telco will continue to be what they are now. They have their own uh, study, their own uh, projection, and they come in as when they decide. So here, that's why the critical role of the PDO, the program delivery office, to work closely with telcos. This is the planning to get input for telcos so that this thing can move. Often, we have a provider, the trenching provider providing to list this trench to telcos. Often the planning of the trench, telco wants to go this way, they move this way. As a result, the, the trench becoming what effort. So those are the alignment that need to become, to actually bridge the gap, to, to, to synchronize between the PDO and the telcos uh, uh, infra provider. Huh? And also we are, should need to go beyond fiber only. That the smart port infrastructure is very important and the IoT infrastructure to enable various solutions to fast track it's like what cloud is doing to us lah, to fast track the deployment. Okay. Next. Just be more on the digital infrastructure in Malaysia. If you look on the left, this what the the how the telecommunication industry in Malaysia. That's issue in Malaysia. <laughs> There's a state where we are now. <laughs> okay. So the issue here is backhaul and front hall. So it goes from the backhaul back and front, front hall. The back end and front end. In Malaysia, we have limited telco providers. Okay. There could be some few more. It's a closed market. And this telco. On the back, oh, they also involved on the retail in the last mile internet connection. And then they, they also have a bit that 
we provide two year license or uh, a plan to the consumer. So, so this is issue now that there's a limited uh, choice. So what we need to do for smart city has been done overseas is that we need to have, if you can see here, uh, the paper, the front hall, there's no middle mile. Middle mile basically tell, tell on towers, telco towers done by the various telcos, huh? very siloed. So what we need at city level is actually to do on the left, sorry, on the right, huh? is to have a middle mile fiber with a ring of smart hole. And from there, you do last mile fiber to the premises. Okay. So whereby uh, things can be more integrated, you can have an opportunity to do more with ISPs, more internet service uh, provider. Oh. And then there could be potential revenue to the local council also. Uh, then uh, you can have more uh, accelerate the, the, kind, the, the above the smart solution to tap to the infrastructure such as IoT and smartphones. Huh? So uh, this is very key for smart city. Smart pole, uh, Tam City has started to seriously look into it. For example, Pasir Gudang and then a uh, few other cities, I believe Penang also. But this, the role it needs to be important. And then I feel Smart uh, Pole is under HCMC. So uh, it's very important to actually uh, drive this effort. So the, sorry, one thing I missed just now is that the, the on the limited internet service provider. So and what is an open approach? The open approach is in the next slide. Right. Okay. Overseas, for example, uh, uh, South Africa, uh, they have multiple ISPs using uh, 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 technology exchange. Uh, they have uh, multiple ISPs, 100 plus. In Singapore, 40 plus. We less than 10 in Malaysia. Okay. So with this approach, we must see various ISP compete with each other, provide the best services to the riot, to the citizen. And they have a monthly, can they go up to three monthly, monthly plan. Huh? And then you can switch the contracts real time. So in Malaysia, there are a few providers already starting pushing this agenda forward and then certainly this should be the direction for the country uh, to move on. Next. Now on data management, uh, it's critical that for data management you need the technology tools uh, to process the data for integration, processing, analytics and providing the services end-to-end. Uh, -end. And then critically of that policy to drive data sharing and collaboration, as well as governance. Next. So this is another simplified version of the data uh, processing uh, data pipeline. So if you can look on the from the left hand side, the first box is already a gap in this. Why? Because uh, at the state and local level, we do not have two key important data policy. For internal purpose, you need the uh, internal data governance policy. And then uh, for external purpose, the open data policy, working with private sector to come in with innovation. So this is to get in Malaysia, we do not, but we already have uh, involved uh, on Batu Pahat has that, but it's beyond Batu Pahat to actually implement, it has to go to the state level. The whole state government. So that currently in process. So that is very important uh, policy that needs to be done. Hopefully, Prime Minister can actually come in and support this effort with the state government. Next is on data integration. Data integration, uh, before you address data integration, you need uh, something called uh, processing processes and the interoperability between the departments, between the various functions. So currently from what my observation, this is non-existent formally in local council or state government. 
in Malaysia. So, very, very important, you need this so-called SOP to achieve align various departments together to support this agenda. And then from there, cleansing is all uh, technology driven already. Cataloging is very important for data storage and retrieval for tagging and so forth. And Devil's Tree. Devil's Tree is very key because now the issue here is the government start asking which is sensitive, which is non-sensitive. So those are the issues. Uh, in 2012, when the UK government embarked into this, this standard 70% is open. The next two years, London came in with 200, sorry, 500 million investment into the cities with innovation. So those are the things where these are very key considerations by the government that the alignment. So you need guidelines. You need guidelines which is sensitive, which is not. Then uh, if guidelines can come in, uh, how federal can actually guide state government and to create this guideline which is sensitive, which is not in general, at least local level have clear mind, just use that implement. So currently it's a question at all level, which is which. Yeah? So you need guidelines on that. On analytics, uh, it's good. Also, I was observed also that under the mission of observing project, one of the key de delivery is to actually systemize and then uh, create a guideline methodology of predictive and prescriptive analytics, meaning that you can actually see trends and then actually how you can avoid things from re repeating. As such, you can actually reduce OPEX and make, make the operation more efficient. Uh, so in Malaysia, the capability mostly on descriptive analytics. Huh? Now some uh, company going to predictive and so forth. Yeah. So towards the far right is the output where you have data platforms to community app, portal, report, and so forth through the various users. Huh? So this is uh, a simple end-to-end on the data management just to align where are the gaps. Now, on the digital platform, which is the next slide, to support data management. That's why technology here is on 30%, because it's about services. Eh? Okay. So I have five minutes hours too, so I'll just speed up. So do you have technology platform enabler? You, you need data integration tool, you need metadata management tool, uh, AI-based analytic tool, and outreaching tool. So next. Innovation Hub is very key. It's the neutral platform, as mentioned just now. We we'll go to the next slide. So you need this platform where you can gather contents, community, and the place. In Malaysia, we have lots of co-working space, private sector driven, and also government driven on the urban transportation center and the life. More for operational, not for developmental of the cities. Huh? And then on the MDA also we said digital hub. So all these needs we pull together to actually uh, leverage uh, on what we have now. Next. Operationalizing IOC is very key. So, uh, which is not center for government operation is next. Now there's three elements of uh, operational modes of IOC. Eh? One day to day, second emergency, third is disaster. So day to day for state local government, for surveillance, research, research, and more importantly, digital economy. Okay. 80% of any time is actually at day to day. And then 20% is doing emergency and disaster. So emergency, police, fire department, bomba, and health authorities come to the picture. But here, the key challenges here is that under Ministry of Housing and Local Government, uh, to support this, we need a good uh, system for, for complaint, for incident reporting, and so forth. Currently, the government has its part, as some of us know. But CISPA is very much government-driven. Technology readiness now has not followed the technology evolution. Capability is much uh, uh, better now in the market. But there is our statement. CISPA is government-driven. So what we need is that to have a more private sector-driven so-called uh, public uh, reporting incident system that actually working with the government so that the, the capability keep on evolving. Obviously, during, sorry, go back. Uh, disaster, obviously, at the IOC, when coming to disaster, National Security Council will take the driver's seat. So, 
uh, from from whoever the owner is to actually drive the data management. And that's where when the interoperability is very, very important just now. If you don't have interoperability, there is no responsive decision making. Okay, next. So this is some of the example uh, that we have uh, at state and local level. Next. These are uh, two slides on possible next steps. So for, to me, for local government, for local government, the, normally the two revenues are from quick rent and, and processing fees. So here, through Smart City, how you can see work from a sector on data business, sharing the good data, you have the data. How you can actually have revenue sharing in private sector on data, digital advertising over app, over various medium and then revenue sharing on the data as a service how you can work with power sector to actually get other people to actually rent full spaces for sensors for other things next. Next. so these are this is my last slide uh so i feel the government the ball is on government part that i mentioned from the start so power sector out there we are ready with funding, uh, technology, and data management capability. So now it's there, how to put the ball in the middle so that both parties can play. Now government is holding the ball. So there is a scenario now. So at the policy level, how do you have more state-driven, they have to come forward, be more proactive, to have more data-driven policy? Municipal financing is very key. Fine. Municipal financing is very key. A lot of uh, sometimes local council, especially Bandaraya, the big cities, they get the uh, uh, financing to build their own new new offices, new buildings. But they can actually do the same financing. They are bankable to do, say, for instance, the digital infrastructure, uh, co fund with private sector to actually accelerate this effort. So, municipal financing is one of the programs that you need to briefly that train. Uh, have this program under the World Bank that do this municipal financing guideline and how we can actually to guide local government uh, uh, raise funds through various uh, financial institutions. In the middle, on the program level, PPP is very key uh, for, for with the program delivery partner. And at the solution level, government needs to do procurement on OPEX space. No, no, KPEX. <laughs> with OPEX, there's no risk to, to government uh, on on technology risk, there's no maintenance risk, and then uh, the private sector only meet the service level requirement only to the government. So government no headache. You just provide the service level that 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 come. So that so basically that is hopefully provide the overview of where we are now and hopefully how we can actually progress together forward uh, with the new government now, especially uh, with the new prime minister. Uh, focusing on uh, economic growth. And I believe Smart City is one of the key areas that we need to do our part. So with that, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nick, for your presentation. So I'd like to take a question from the floor. Yes. Testing, testing. So I'm even blind. My name is from Afik from Indonesia. Uh, I would like to ask about your view. As we were told earlier by uh, presentation before before this, uh, South Korea, they started the Smart City with the introduction of Smart City Act. While in Malaysia, based on your slide, we have the National Smart City Framework. So from your personal view, uh, from your side, private sector, is it important for us to have uh, this act to drive uh, the agencies to implement smart city in Malaysia, or the framework is enough? Uh, it's just enough for them to uh, implement smart city in Malaysia. Thank you. Good question. Uh, yes, from my short experience previously with the Korean, uh, I was with Kistat, Kistat, previously for six months. In Korea, every new thing they put an act together. 
act basically rules of the game. In Malaysia, more the reason now of what happening lately to us politically. Take for instance Thailand. Thailand also changed their prime ministers from time to time, but Thailand practice what Korea practice. Everything new thing, new agenda, put an act to them so that the agenda is intact. Not every minister come in, the, the approach different and so forth. So very important for I feel uh, for Prime Minister to consider this because it's, it's the future of the country. We need to create new king. Malaysia has no new king. As such, why reason why from my interpretation that we are keep on the not able to achieve our our high income because we're not creating new things. Yeah. So if you think that understand answer, yeah? So we need that act. We need that government servant needs to work harder. Right. But act is very important. If you look at uh, the if you can Google the Korean acts yeah? on science and technology, under the seven area, they have various acts. Under science and technology, but or not, that to actually manage that uh, the delivery of the agenda. You. Okay, thank you. And any other question? Yes, Dr. Pop. Uh, thank you, uh, John Brown from APT. Uh, actually, similar question uh, with the previous uh, speaker. Um, you mentioned that um, uh, the policy is important, uh, especially data data policy, and then actionable policy is also quite important uh, to make it work. Um, so, data policy sometimes. Uh, uh, let me give you some example. Uh, uh, through the UN ESCAP, there is some study uh, in Kazakhstan. Uh, for Kazakhstan, they uh, made uh, their own act to instruct all the government agency to uh, integrate all the data owned by the government. So 70 uh, government agency pulled their data into the data lake. So the, the government has a strong leadership to integrate all the data. But sometimes, um, in, for instance, uh, Malaysia is a federal structure uh, compared to other uh, nations. Uh, you mentioned Korea and Thailand. Uh, they are a little bit centralized uh, countries. So it, it would be easier for them to implement those kind of data rules. But uh, in Malaysia, when I understand, and some other countries as well, they have some federal structure. Local government is different from the federal government. So sometimes it's, it's very difficult to implement uh, those kind of uh, data policy throughout the whole nation. So um, you mentioned about the act, but uh, do you have any other uh, advice to the government or any stakeholders? What would be the best way to implement uh, data policy in your country? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, uh, in, in Russia, the jurisdiction of the state government, uh, few areas that they can make decisions independent of the federal government, especially on land matters. When we're coming to utilities, most of utilities are centralized federal government. That becoming a barrier for innovation to address climate change. So, so Malaysia now, we have to evolve uh, uh, on the, as we go to the low middle income, we do privatization. A lot of our centralization happened. Uh, now to, we are now at high middle, moving to high income. We have to decentralize back the, the better services to the state and local government, empower them to actually accelerate the growth. So now the federal government is still holding better situation. So that is on the, the current context of utilities. But when coming to data, uh, from my observation that in any new area, state and especially state government do look up to federal government also. So the issue now is that how proactive is the federal government come down at mid-level, mid mid-stream, working with state level 
to deliver the agenda. On planning policy, such as, for example, the recent Johor responsibility blueprint, Plan Malaysia goes down at the middle level, working with state government as support. Right? So, but the issue here is that Plan Malaysia need to stop there only because they are on policy. So who coming down at the middle level to deliver the program? So that's where now private sector is coming from the side, working with state government, deliver the agenda in collaboration with the, the uh, affair government. So meaning that there need to be one facilitator or mass speaker at federal government, working with private sector and, and the local government at the middle level here. So currently we are working with, for instance, my digital. My digital now is, is already identified smart city program. So uh, inshallah they will be cooperating with uh, Plan Malaysia to actually how to actually create the so-called Thailand smart city office in Malaysia on that approach. Because uh, for your information, the magister has a council uh, chaired by the prime minister, which brings together all the state chief ministers uh, and premiers uh, on that table to actually deliver the agenda. That is the current approach we are taking. So that magister being an uh, agency under the prime minister department now also can pull the various enabler on the periphery into this program. So that is the current approach currently being, being planned. <laughs> so there needs to be a lot of activity beyond planning, more influence at the ministry with state government. So far only government, government few government, like Slango has started a bit on implementation. Now it's Rawang. But other states, hopefully, inshallah, probably Johor soon will be coming and so forth. So this kind of awareness program to state government is very, very important also. Perhaps there could be agenda with transition for next year awareness program. Hope I answer your question. Thank you. Um, sorry, I have one question, but uh, due to time constraint, uh, I'm gonna conclude uh, your, your uh, presentation session. Uh, thank you for your presentation and your time, and please give him a, a round of applause. Uh, the last, last yeah, speaker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last speaker uh, uh, is uh, Mr. Dr. Umar Bazrin. Bahar Luton, uh, I'd like to invite him to the podium. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, Dr. Ahmad has over 22 years of experience in manufacturing technology and information technology and telecommunications and data analytics. And has given lectures, conferences, seminars on business intelligence, data analytics, data science, and digital transformation and strategic management. And Dr. Art, uh, has a doctor's degree in business analytics and serves as an industrial academic advisor to a few public universities. And he's a member to the Data Management Association, as well as the International Institute of Business and Analysis. Uh, Dr. Ahmad has completed over 60 full cycle data intelligence projects in both the public and private sector. The doc currently Director of Business Insight and Analytics in Data Micron Systems Company. The please welcome Thank you very much, MC, for the opening. Thank you, everyone, for having me in the stage. A very good morning, two minutes to afternoon. And as I am standing between you and lunch, I shall be very brief, very concise. And um, again, I express my gratitude to the event organizer for having me on the stage. 
So before I begin my um, so-called sharing on big data challenges in smart city, let me um, clarify that I, I am not an urban planner, nor a smart city architect. So uh, with regards to uh, my background, I think I am the most little knowledgeable person with regards to smart city in this particular room. But however, however, I've been in the data uh, industry for significant number of years now. Um, having said that, I am 50% uh, in the academia. I am an advisor to eight different universities, and I also currently serve serving um, Data Micron Systems in Jan Brahad, a local company, a local multinational company, which specializes in um, data intelligence, uh, data management, and also um, doing some, uh, to a certain extent, consulting works. Uh, with the uh, government of Malaysia. Okay, so I am not being very pessimistic or very uh, negative as the topic suggests. Now, this area actually bogging me down. So I'm going to move backwards a little bit. So um, although that the, um, the, the title or the topic of this presentation sounds a little bit negative, but this is, um, this is an issue that needs to be um, addressed, not only for smart cities, but BDE as a whole, uh, an issue and challenges um, in, in Malaysia or in, 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 in the world. So next slide, please. So let me begin with the notion of big data. Um, every day, as we know, uh, we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. I, I cannot uh, measure how much quintillion bytes of data in terms of weight, how many kilo, how many pounds. Um, but again, and so much so that most of this data that has been created, um, it actually originated for the past in the past couple of years. Uh, since after the pandemic, we see that most of uh, the businesses, not only in Malaysia but worldwide, has actually transformed themselves from being very conservative, manually like kind of transaction to more digital savvy. Uh, not only because of the of the uh, social distancing uh, effect. But, but to realize the benefits of having all the activity digitalized, we, we benefit more from that. So um, another, another notion is that we are more becoming, uh, we are becoming more information sensitive. Every day we want to know uh, how much COVID-19 infection and how would be the, how would the, 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 the infection uh, progress in the next couple of days with regards to the, our traveling plans and whatnot. So we are becoming more data and information sensitive. So, uh, however, again, um, this data that has been created or even consumed, but if we fail to analyze or if we fail to utilize this data according to our own needs, then the data will reside there, will become, will become, I would say, useless. Okay, next. All right, so in the context of smart city, okay, um, I believe that Dato and other presenters have pointed out that the importance of data as the strongest commodity or the most significant commodity in smart city development, um, we cannot run away from uh, managing, from effectively consuming those data that is churned by multiple devices, not only uh, via your IOTs, but also by other forms of data that may or may not be critical to your management and operations of smart city. Uh, as, as of that, many existing and forthcoming technology, upcoming technology we have may seen or may not seen, uh, they are potentially integral to the management or development of smart city. So what I'm trying to say is that this data, it may fall not under your purview or your uh, inventory, you may use other data sets uh, that probably will be very crucial to your operations. It's only that um, you must know, yeah, you must know critically how to use them to make your operations and your smart city operations better. As you can see right here, this is sample snapshot of a stream data in a particular city. I will not name what city it is, but it shows that it shows that the uh, transportation kind of behavior at a certain particular point of time. So having this data within our grasp, all right? So there are two ways to interpret this. If we do not know how to use it, it becomes something like a, it becomes like a picture. 
But coming to the people or analysts or even decision makers, once you see this behavior, you can, you can actually make some decision that is um, confined or even under your purview. If you are an urban planner, for instance, once you see this data, maybe, just maybe, you can, you can plan for a better or effective traffic, um, I would say, report. If you are a transportation operator or designer, maybe from this data, you can see that um, at a certain point of time, you need to increase the frequency of bus transportation routes or other public transportation access. So again, you, data is only a data if you do not know how to use it, if you cannot connect to a specific decision making that you must do. This is a problem, another issue with, um, I'm not saying only domestically uh, perspective, but also in global kind of environment or landscape. You have data, but you don't know how to do, what to do with the data, okay? Next. Okay, managing data in smart city, okay? Since, since the, the, the core concept or core philosophy of smart city would be rely heavily on data, okay? Um, it is very much crucial for you to understand the importance to get the data on time in place without any hiccups, without any disruption, right? Such as, such as um, employing intelligent traffic light patterns during rush hours to get what? You must know not only to embed these sensors, but you must also know why you embed these sensors in the first place. I live in a, in a, in, in a municipality in Klang Valley, whereby I observe, I think I have said this in the previous uh, conference, um, not too long ago, I think Mr. Parabi, know, everyone who actually attended the conference know, it has been like two months. The issue is that the traffic light timing from, from green to red and from the red to green is not feasible, it's not logical, especially during peak hours. Okay? I counted this morning, only three seconds. Only three seconds. And this route is actually considered as the main artery in the particular vicinity. So it causes massive backlog of traffic jams. I think more than three kilometers backlog. So the issues has been, has been, has been extended, has been complained, social media, WhatsApp, telephone, but I think this entering the third month now, nothing is actually happening. So this is the issue because one of the issue, one of the apparent issue is that at the top of the traffic light, there's a CCTV there. There's a CCTV place. There's a camera place on top of the traffic light. So, so to me, I mean, to, to all the road users within my vicinity, we ask ourselves, what would be the usage of the CCTV since the simple problem they could not mitigate, okay? So, so essentially, I cannot express the importance of having decision making to your data, all right? So again, the point number two, um, among the usage of data within smart city, uh, efficiently writing garbage collection truck, again, uh, conventionally or the current uh, state of our situation is that we, in Malaysia, we have our garbage collector to come uh, on the periodic basis, on the fixed day periodic basis. So in my area of living, uh, they do come every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. The issue arises when they come, but no garbage, right? So that makes that render the, the services a bit um, inefficient, I would say, because they do claim, they do claim to the municipality for the garbage collection where there's no garbage to collect. So efficiently, I am saying that, that uh, some form of sensor or data collecting, um, data collection method should be in place, you know, to make the service delivery better, reducing water consumption in parks, and monitoring and use the condition of public infrastructure. I think most of these points has been um, addressed by all the other speakers. So uh, bear in mind that I am coming from the data perspective, not so much on the urban planning perspective. Uh, as far as uh, my organization is concerned, um, we process the data that has been collected by you respective organizations. So without the data that originated from your respective projects or organizations, there's no data analytics per se. So next. All right. 
So according to McKinsey, I believe everybody here knows who McKinsey's and company uh, uh, is. According to them, um, any organization or project will adopt PDA are 23 times more likely to be efficient and 19 times more likely to be profitable. However, however, Gartner, another member to the top four consulting company, has stated that 60% of PDA projects fail with estimated failure rate of 85%. So there's a gap there. There's a gap, right? Yeah, I mean, BDA promises are quite apparent, but also the failure to launch the project also are equally apparent. And if we are in the academic industry, estimated failure rate of 85% is critical because if, in, if I am a lecturer in the university, in my class, I have like 100 students in my class, only 15 students pass. So what does it show? It shows whether I'm being an effective lecturer, or maybe, or maybe most of the students fail to understand the core foundation of the subject in the first place. So I would like to think about the latter. Most of the BDA project failure originated because they do not know how to effectively adopt BDA in the first place. Why is that? Primary key number one is essentially the knowledge. The knowledge how to effectively use the BDA in the first place. I have been in the project, in the in, in Malaysia public sector project, I think for the past six years right now, and I have worked over more than 30, 30 ministries and agencies. And from my experience, I can actually summarize that first, the lack of the necessary knowledge to manage data is the primary key. Why? Why? According to one study, 85% of Malaysian government PDA projects, I'm not saying fail, I'm not saying fail, but um, it is not up to the, to the standard of PDA adoption. There are many, many issues that uh, you know, contribute to the sector, but I can say for sure that number one is lack of sufficient knowledge. Which knowledge? There are plenty of plethora with regards of knowledge, but with regards to this presentation, I would say the failure to use the information, to convert that information to a very concise, precise decision making. Because yeah, we have data, we have information, but we cannot decide on to do with the information due to the restriction of act. Maybe that act, it is not, fall, does not fall within our ministry, so we cannot do anything about it. But we have that information. That's a problem. That's the biggest problem. Number two, maybe if that information says that when we want to decide on something, we must get approval from another ministry. So that also impedes the timely decision making um, promise that this technology uh, was supposed to do. So again, those variables actually um, are antecedents to the, I'm not saying failure, failure is not the right word, but um, not maximizing the technology enough. There's one, there's one case study. Uh, again, uh, our government agency, in 2016, they have launched their big data project. They have purchased, they acquired, I think more than 16 million ringgit worth of, um, of, of um, technology. But until today, they have yet to maximize the entire 16 million of investment with regards to the purchase. So no ROI, and this is actually the seventh year right now. Why? Because number one, lack of use cases, and lack of use cases uh, would actually lead to the inaccuracy to design the overall infrastructure of the BD in the first place. Number two, the failure to understand the complexity of data integration and also data management. As what Dato pointed out just now, don't ever underestimate the importance of data management because data management is the most integral factor in the success of your data projects, aside from the skill that I have just mentioned to you. Okay, next. Okay, with regards, now coming back to the smart city uh, context, um, there are certain complexities um, that, that would actually arise to the difficulty to implement. Uh, BD in smart city uh, in, in regards to the presentation. Number one, uh, again, inaccessible uh, 
without our information through, through the systems proprietary. Again, that will actually uh, fall back to the system's interoperability issues. Number two, ethical concern. Whether this data am I using? Am I allowed to use it in the first place or otherwise? Right? So, so do you guys know that the WhatsApp system has been compromised? Last week, the WhatsApp has been compromised. More than 2 million users' data are affected. Are you, you guys know about this? Imagine that, imagine that in the smart city, in the smart community, we are using similar communications between citizens. And suddenly, our communications platform has been compromised. Are you concerned or not? If I am the citizen, I will be very concerned. Because, they, because in the WhatsApp, I would say in the WhatsApp, the information about my telephone number, they would know. The information about uh, my user profile, this hacker would know. And if I am using a single sign-on okay, to a particular uh, system, I would be very, very concerned because my single sign-on would originate from other password that I probably am using for my banking, which I'm not doing that, of course. But who knows? So this is, this is one, one issue that needs to be uh, addressed when you are developing a smart city security, which I will address in a couple of slides later, because security is the perennial concern. Because if you not, if you if you undermine this role of cyber security in your smart city development, um, to the to the more literate users, they will not have that buy-in altogether. I will not have that buy-in as a citizen. Okay. And and number three, not only in smart city but other BD implementation, the data accuracy issues. Okay, so this is uh, has been addressed by the previous speaker about your data standardization. So um, I will explain it further in my next couple of slides. Next, I feel helpless because I cannot control my own slide. You think? Okay, next. So there are four, there are four distinctive big data management challenges. I am speaking these challenges from both uh, smart city and other typical uh, implementation. So uh, item number one is data integration. Concern number two with regards to security and privacy. Number three, data management. And number four, definitely about your investment. Next. So with regards to data integration, Okay, time and time again, time and time again, maybe yesterday you heard about this, today you also uh, hear about this, different stakeholders, different application. Now, this does not actually, uh, uh, um, with regards to smart city environment, in Malaysia, uh, I'm speaking to my Malaysian colleague, uh, maybe uh, international delegates, you like to hear this classic case study. Um, we all have heard of hospital information systems, correct? HIS. HIS has been around since early 2000, if not earlier. So I'm not saying again, I, I'm not commenting the failure, but the lagging launch of hospital information system in Malaysia is due to the system's interoperability issues. Okay, Because in Malaysia, we have this agenda to interconnect, to interconnect all government hospitals information into one single, um, I'm not saying repository alone, but one single, I would say, unified system. So that if I am a patient, if I go to one state, all right, if, and if I go to another state, uh, they will have the, the same uh, information about me as a patient, which right now, they are not doing it. So if I am a patient in Selangor, to a government hospital, if I go to Penang, for instance, in a government hospital in Penang, they will not see my information because my information is resided in Selangor. That's what's happening. So back in those years, I think it has been like uh, two decades right now. The government has already drawn out the plan to centralize this, this, this uh, so-called initiative. But I would say until today, there is no significant progress on that HIS project nationwide due to the system's interoperability. Okay? That is one of the core issues. So again, in the views of this, Right? Maybe like municipal, your local authority, or even your federal counterparts, they have their own system from which that the element of BDA we are supposed to unify all the data, not system, 
all the data from each respective system and to use it according to our use case. But if my, if my system cannot establish a linking or bridging link to your database, this is what is going to happen. Similarly, like HIS. And there are other instances as well, right? Like eTana, for instance, our eLAN application. So similarly, the issues of uh, systems interoperability, which that without having a sound data strategy, there will be no data analytics. They, the main dependency of a big data analytics is data. Without data, there will be no analytics. So this is important. Again, this is important because again, element of a smart city, good smart city governance is data, accessibility. So without, next one, please. Without achieving uh, the statement that we call syntactic interoperability, we are going to struggle. Okay, let me share with you some of our, some of my projects with the government agencies. Uh, I can safely say that although that things are improving with regards to data sharing initiative, but there are still plenty of room yeah, to improvise. One government ministry, they, the structure of a government ministry in Malaysia, they have many agencies under them. Similarly, like Plan Malaysia, Plan Malaysia is one agency under the Ministry of Housing and Local Government. Am I correct? So, so again, some, I'm not saying about Plan Malaysia, I'm not saying about Plan Malaysia, but other ministry. Okay? Even they cannot control, even the ministry cannot get the, the collaboration between they themselves and their agencies to share the data. But although, but despite that, there are some improvements. There have been some improvements over the past couple of years uh, with regards to data sharing, maybe not a systemized approach. Them at the ad hoc or upon query approach, but there have been some form of significant improvements, which I clearly applaud. So please give yourself a round of applause. Okay, to the local. Come on. Not lunch today. Come on. All right. Okay. So again, again, to achieve that, to achieve that, all right, we must establish a technical framework for data inter of or systems interoperability that has been addressed by our fellow Korean um, counterparts just now, your standards. But again, uh, uh, in, in my own personal or professional experience, I have yet to see such standard has been put in place. Come on, in Malaysia, the first public sector big data project was way back in 2015, right? The first Mampu project on big data. Now it's already coming to 2023, okay? So we need to see a very significant improvement seven years now, down the road. At least we must have a good, good standard or good policy with regards to data sharing. Our Department of Statistics Malaysia, yeah, they can share data with you. Any DOSEM representative here? No? Okay, good. All right. Department of Statistics Malaysia, they can share micro data with you, but they only give 30% only. They will not give the entire population of the data because according to them and me, I am a researcher, 30% it is good enough to do analysis. Yeah, fine. But if you want to do a targeted campaign, 30% is barely enough. Correct? Am I correct or am I not correct? To a certain extent, we must have access to the entire data population to do targeted, but, but, but then it depends on your use case. If you are doing a social science research, your p-value 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, yeah, 30% to me is more than acceptable. But, but in the real industry study, or to, 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 to solve a real world issue, all right, you need more than 30%. Hence, I don't think that the current, from my own personal experience, of course, I don't think that the current 30% policy, it is good enough. Right? It is good enough for us to do some targeted campaign. Why? Because BDA is about targeted campaigning. Correct? BDA is about targeted company. You must understand your customers. You must understand your market. You must understand who, what your user profile or your market profile uh, behavior towards generating your service or your product. So without having a very good tactical data, micro data, how can you achieve that? 
state in the first place. All right? Now, point number two, international standards again, right? I do implore if if Malaysia, if Malaysia, this solution is actually for Malaysia government or Malaysia higher authority, all right? Put up some standards. Put up some standards that everybody would follow. Okay. So hence, that's why we are learning from our um, advanced counterparts from Korea, from Denmark, from Ireland, for instance, because we really, really, it is time. It is time for us to really um, uh, exercise this. Not on paper, not on slide, but really, really put our pen, uh, you know, our, our, our hands on it. And again, why do we do this? To achieve this term called syntactic interoperability. Next. Are you guys with me so far? I am actually nervous, to be honest with you, because this is a context that I'm not in control with, because if I'm speaking about data alone, yeah, I, can, I think I can command the stage better, but speaking about urban planning, smart city, which is not entirely my domain, that makes me really, really nervous. I'm so sorry. So again, another issue is security and privacy, right? This is what I might concern, uh, because have you heard of this Mira e botnet? No? Mira e botnet? No. Who has heard of this Mira e botnet? Mira e botnet has attacked Cisco servers throughout the world, has attacked Twitter, Instagram, not Facebook, but most of our social media platform. Five minutes. Come on. I still have like 20 more slides. Sorry. All right. So, Mira e botnet is critical to your network equipment. So, this is, this is one of the one of the uh, danger, one of the emerging danger, because this Mira e botnet, year, year on, I mean, I mean, year in, year out, the developer of this botnet improvise themselves, you know, right? So be very careful of this Mira e botnet, right? Why? Because take a look at the point number three, because our limited understanding on the importance of cybersecurity is like having a good bungalow, good, good semi-detached house, but with a chain link fence. We are not invested enough in our cybersecurity, or we undermine our cybersecurity. Most of our antivirus we buy from Shopee, or even Lazada for 5 ringgit or 10 ringgit. Why can't we spend more, much on protecting our data, protecting our system? There is behavior, ladies and gentlemen. Even I myself, no, I don't buy from Shopee. You. Okay, next. All right, so... There are many um, approach. There are many approaches to securing your layers of environment. Uh, what can what, what I can suggest is that for each layer, uh, your web, your application, or your database, do protect them with a separate layer of security. I mean, I mean, can you quantify? Can you monitor? Can you can you quantify your the, 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 the data that you are producing? Because me myself, I cannot quantify. I cannot quantify in terms of monitoring. My researchers, you know, all my um, um, analysis, right, my information that I shared with my clients, although that, that resides within my uh, uh, desktop or even my notebook, but I do secure them in such a way. I do some redundancy. I do some failsafe uh, fail mechanism because I cannot quantify in terms of monitoring. The moment that the data is lost, even, even I cannot, I'm, I'm not sure whether $100,000 US dollars can compensate to all the data, you know, that means compromise. So again, for each application or each layer um, of investment, you should, you should think of uh, ways and ways of protecting, like cryptography, uh, we have been speaking about blockchain, uh, biometrics, you know, like game theory, something that ensure research on, because if I talk about game theory anthology, it will take until six o'clock in the evening. So maybe Chip Farabi, if you want to hear more, maybe you can WhatsApp me. All right, next. Okay, all right. Data management. Okay, so big data. There's a there's a there's a in in Malaysia in Malay we call rukun. Eh? As a Muslim, we have rukun Islam. So in big data, we have these commandments. So normal commandments of big data includes volume, variety, velocity, and veracity. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, these commandments actually can become an issue, especially when it comes to managing BDA in your environment. With regards to volume, you collect. You collect, but no collection planning. That that actually result in data redundancy and uh, you know, um, and you you bloating, 
you're plotting your infrastructure with uh, data that you can actually have a plan, right? Whether to archive it, to store it, uh, etc. With regards to variety, incompatibility issues, again, interoperability, because again, you are not uh, extracting data from a single source, but from myriad of sources, myriad of formats. So you need to have a mechanism to, to manage uh, the complexity. Also, the velocity, right? You must have appropriate, appropriate data processing tools, eh? because if you are processing stream data, you require streaming data tool to extract, manage, and store. And veracity, which is uh, um, concerning about your reliability and predictability. Uh, do you, 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 ladies and gentlemen, have this slide? You have access to this slide? Okay, all right. Next. Because they, they, they refuse my time extension, so I have like one or two minutes to go. Okay, so um, again, I have uh, addressed the complexity uh, and, and, and the focus and the solution. Okay, next. Okay, the final part, which is the most important part, is money. Okay, where do I get the money to invest? Right? Technology wins is one of the significant barriers. Yeah, if I invest 16 million ringgit in 2016 and I have yet to reap the benefit seven years on, yeah, I will be very worried. Again, that worry can be elevated either by knowing how to use the technology. Same thing like us. We, as a normal consumer, we purchase 6,000, 7,000 ringgit of iPhone 14 Pro Max. But do we really use? Do we really use? up to the dollars and cents or we normally use to use it to uh, to, 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 to channel whatsapp to facebook or you know completing our our lazada and shopee transaction that that the 1000 ringgit trans uh, 1000 ringgit device can do so again you buy that technology you must know how to use the technology so again financial financial planning is equally important to reduce the uncertainty of your uh, Technology investment next, and and according to Deloitte, not according to myself, according to Deloitte. Okay, there are four types of financing available. So I am not sure whether this financing is suitable uh, to your application or to your environment. Otherwise, they are essentially funding structure, uh, equity structure, and debt mechanism structure, and also some hybrid structure that you can actually focus your attention for. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, next. Next. Okay, summary. All right. Summary. All right. Okay. So, again, going forward, going forward, being a data um, practitioner yeah, for the past, I think, a decade or so, you must have a connected data strategy to eliminate data silos because this is a parent. This is a parent not only in Malaysia. I've done projects in Hong Kong, I've done projects in some part of. Uh, Somalia to be to be to be to be precise. Still, the data, although that some policy do take place, but still, your data is your my data is my data, your data is your data. All right. I I I I work I work hard to get this data. Why should I give it to you? So this is typical, typical conversation that I came across this couple of years. So and and to get to get a very good um ROI, return on investment, um for big data approaches or investment to plan your big data projects in a small micro bit way. Do not go in one bulk because you know you do not put your, your entire egg in one basket. Do bite-sized approach, use case different approach. Right? So if you do not know what use case different approach, maybe you can contact me afterwards. I can I can uh, happily to share with you what use case different approach is. And also, a different approach, remember, if you have stream data like this, you must attach some form of decision making, right? Similarly, in my area, right, the traffic light doesn't perform accordingly to the uh, kind of standards. So what I do, if I get the information, I add 60 more seconds to it. It's simple, but taking three months and still, still, the clock is still ticking. If there's a, there's a problem, you know, this is what I'm saying. Decision making process should be attached to your big data analytics strategy. If you do not attach this decision making process to your big data strategy, don't purchase big data because you will be you'll be investing in, 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 in white elephant project down the road. All right? 
And lastly, do secure your environment. I cannot emphasize it more. Secure your environment. Next. Okay, about my company. Where am I from? I'm from Data Micron. Although that I'm, I am not selling any product here, don't worry. So uh, we are a solution provider, right? That offers AI, big data, IoT, and some other forms of business intelligence products and services. Uh, next. Remember about Data Micron, you can always visit Data Micron at datamicron.com. Again, we are looking this uh, in Malaysia. We have presence in more than 20 countries around the world. So um, again, uh, I thank you very much for having me. So it is a bit tough to deliver everything within 30 minutes. So I, I apologize if I miss some, 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 some points. So however, if you do have any further questions, either you can visit on the floor right now or you can email me. I think the Secretariat will be happy to furnish you my information and detail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Alana, for your uh, the, the, the presentation. Uh, it's already last time, but uh, I'd like to take out uh, one or two questions for him. So, is there any question? So, I think uh, everyone very hungry. <laughs> so, I'd like to ask one question. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that you uh, highlight that the importance of uh, data management, I think that uh, in data management, I think the data ethics is very important factor, key elements. In Korea, uh, the Korean government uh, released uh, data ethics uh, guidelines more than two years ago. So I'm not sure whether you can the right person to answer this question, but uh, that doesn't matter. Does Malaysian government uh, have a, a similar uh, guideline or policy about data ethics? Data ethics, you're saying? Data ethics, okay. Um, I can answer that. Uh, although that whether it is, it is accurate enough, uh, I beg to differ. So in Malaysia, we have this one agency called Mampu. Everybody knows Mampu, right? Okay. Mampu has developed some form of open data policy, policy but despite open data policy that has been um, drafted or implemented a couple of years ago, there's still some criticism. Criticism in the sense that uh, not only government agencies or ministries, even us as a private citizens or public entities, we found that some of those data are not so usable, are not so usable because uh, a normal data, they, they furnish it's only in the aggregated form, not really in the raw format, which I'm going to, I'm going to get to your point afterwards. So, so that, that actually um, um, disrupt the entire uh, objective of open data in the first place. The governance is already there, but the implementation, there's a gap between the, uh, the, the understanding on the importance of certain data sets or get data granul granularity to be shared and versus the willingness of the agencies that providing the data to share in such form that is required by the consumers. You get what I'm saying or not? So supply does not make the demand. Although that there are some, some policies that stated that, yeah, you can request, the government can share. So that is actually undertaken and that actually been exercised. However, the gap exists that the, 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 the supply does not meet the requirement of the demand because the demand side require some form of micro and granular data, not processed, not aggregated. So that's, that's, that's it. But we cannot, we cannot um, criticize uh, too, too critical because it falls under the GDPR or the PDPA. Um, so, so but, but I can safely say that um, the policy is there, but there are so much room to be improved. But the policy is already there. Thank you. So, I think there's no question, additional question for him. So, please uh, give him a round of applause. Thank you. So, I'm going to wrap up uh, session three. Uh, in session three, we took a uh, look at some various approaches to 
collecting, storing, uh, analyzing, utilizing smart city data, as well as uh, related uh, challenges and issues. So I'm going to and uh, share with you at the closing session about what we discussed uh, during our session and what is what is challenges and issues in smart city platform and data integration and sharing. Uh, lastly, I'd like to uh, uh, deliver my special thanks to all speakers and all of you participants uh, with your indulgence. Uh, thank you for joining the session, uh, morning, uh, morning session. So this is the end of our session. I'd like to turn off my microphone to the second there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ki-Hun Kim, for moderating the third session just now. Ladies and gentlemen, as a token of appreciation, we are pleased to invite Mr. Mat Farawi Yusuf bin Mat Yusuf, head of Mat City Unit, Town and Country Planning Malaysia, to deliver the kit. Please welcome Mr. ki Hun Kim from Telecommunication Technology Association, PTA. Mr. Seong Yoon Kim, Senior Researcher, Korea and Electro Electronic Technology Institute. Dr. Ahmad Faisal Abdul Malik, City Next Day, Sunday and Burhai. And last but not least, Dr. Ahmad Fazrin Baharudin, Data Micro and System Syndrome Berhai. Thank you, Mr. Mat Farabi Yusuf bin Mat Yusuf, for delivering the gift. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today program will stop for a lunch break and will resume at 2 p.m. for the last station for today. And lunch is now provided at the Palm Cafe near to the main lobby. Thank you. Recording stopped.
Oh, ada lah. Ambil dia. Kalau buat ini, tutup hari ni. Saya boleh dah lagi boleh takkan. Tidak sayang.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the APT Regional Workshop on Smart City Platform 2022. We resume the program today with the fourth session, and it, it is the last session for the APT Regional Workshop on Smart City Platform with the title Standard Based Smart City Platform and Data. This session will introduce and share APT members country's experiences on standard-based smart city platform recording in progress. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, and with great pleasure, I would like to invite Mr. Mat Farabi Yusuf, my Yusuf, head of Smart City Unit Town and Country Plain in Malaysia, to be the moderator of the board session. Please be invited. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Uh, I do believe uh, all of you have been waiting so long for this uh, the final session for today. So I'm glad to moderate uh, this session. And today's uh, the session four will discuss. Uh, a topic that is, for me, is very dry, a bit dry, but it is one of the pillars uh, in the smart city implementation, especially on the smart city platform, which is on standardization uh, of the uh, smart city. So uh, this session four has been created, uh, titled Standard-Based Smart City Platform and Data, 
And uh, I do believe that uh, for the past two days, we have been listening uh, to a lot of speakers uh, mention about the needs for standardization in smart city platform. So we know that uh, interoperability between platform and data integration are crucial issues. And uh, in smart cities, standardization and certification framework are essential to offer the unified guidelines. So as an as a information to international uh, participants as well, uh, in Malaysia, we just uh, adopt, identical adopt uh, 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 ISO 37122, uh, smart city indicators that will be, will be a basis for the smart city certification in the future. So I do believe this is a very important topic that we uh, would like to listen and, and pay attention. And uh, for this session, we have two prominent speakers. Uh, the first one is Mr. Jun uh, Sok Lee, uh, Director, Electronics and Telecommunication Research Institute, or ATRI. And uh, the second uh, speaker will speak about uh, Ms. Mitali Menon, from a project officer from International Telecommunication Union, or ITU. Uh, both of both of the speakers will be uh, uh, online uh, speakers and will speak uh, virtually. So um, I would like to introduce the first speaker first. The first speaker. Um, okay, the first speaker will be uh, Mr. Jun Sok Lee, Director, Principal Researcher in ATRI. Uh, I read a, a short bio of him before we start the session. Uh, he received his master's degree in software engineering from Korea University back in 1999. And uh, he joined ATRI uh, since 1999 and currently the director of Intelligent Convergence Research Labor Laboratory. And um, I do believe uh, Mr. Lee has a vast experience in standardization, especially with regards to ITU uh, and develop a numbers of ITU T recommendation, including uh, Y 2060, and currently the repertoires of the ITU T SG 20 on question one. So, uh, with that note, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Lee to present his paper. The floor is yours. Thank you, moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Jun Sob Lee, as introduced by the uh, moderator. I'm working in ATRI, which is the Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute in Korea. So, uh, try to share my screen, right? Yes, we, we can hear you clearly. Yeah, I mean, I mean that I have to share. Do I? Do I? Share my screen, or the screen is shown in there. Uh, you have an option to share your screen, or the secretary can share as well. Just that. Not this one. Hold on, please. So can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as, as I introduced by the moderator, I'm Jun Sob Lee. And uh, for the standardization activities, I'm working in the area of IoT and smart city standardizations. And as introduced, I am the rapporteur of question one of study group 20 in ITUT which is mainly uh, focusing on the interoperability and interworking of IoT and smart city application and services. So uh, today uh, I'm gonna explain the standardization activities on smart city indicators. And also I will introduce some uh, relative certification program or pilot project. So uh, I've tried I realized that the next speaker is from the U4SAC ITU T, so some of the topic might be overlap a little bit, but uh, I didn't realize that the next speaker is from ITU T, so please understand the situations. Okay. 
Okay, before we go into the uh, indicator standards, let's look at the uh, what kind of standard, what, what kind of different standards are exist in smart city for, for smart city. So basically there are four, four different types of standard for smart cities. First one, uh, for example, the standard for strategics and standard for process and technical and indicators or KPI. Also called the key performance indicators. So the strategic standard addresses why and provide guidance for stakeholders in planning and management. And process standards deal more with the uh, how and process standards are related to the actions or steps to be taken to build smart city. And the last one, the technical standards are mostly about what needs to be done in terms of the implementations and operation of a city. And we have another one in here in the very low line, the indicators or KPIs. Some studies categorize these indicators standards as a strategic standards. However, indicators are used not only to measure the status of the strategic planning, but also to measure the progress of implementations and operation status of a city. So in other words, indicators or KPIs can be used at all stages from the strategic planning to actual implementations and also operation of, of, of smart cities. So in these presentations, I will introduce the international standards for indicators or KPIs from ISO and JTC1 and ITOT. Okay, uh, before going into the indicator standard directly, let's look at the landscape of uh, standards development organizations related to smart city standardizations. So as you can see in here, standardization activities uh, related to smart cities began in year 2013. So the ITUT has created a focus group on smart sustainable community in year, in year 2013. So based on the, the preliminary study by this focus group, ITOT created a new study group on IoT and smart city in year 2015. And also IEC has created a system evaluation group, which is for reviewing how to carry forward smart city standards. So based on the st study done by this system evaluation groups, I IEC established a systems committee on smart city. And systems committee in IEC uh, mainly developed high-level interfaces and functional requirements that span the work area of several TCs or SCs. And ISO, from year 2012, ISO already had a technical committee for sustainable development of communities, and it was extended to cover sustainable cities and kind of uh, system committee role is given to this TC268 in uh, year 2016. And also JTC1 created a study group for preliminary, st preliminary study on smart cities. And based on the study done by this study group, JTC1 created working group 11 directly on the JTC1, uh, which cover mainly st uh, smart city standardization from ICT point of view. So as a result, all, all these uh, SDOs, ITOT, ISO, IEC, and JTC1 created an entity dedicated to smart city standardization. So for the collaboration on the smart city standardization between these entities, World Smart City Forum organized by IEC, ISO, and ITU in year 2016 and had first meeting in Singapore. And at that time, the joint terminology group between IEC, ISO, and ITUT was created at the uh, uh, was created at that uh, first first meeting. And later in uh, uh, year nine, two, 2019, IEC, ISO, ITU joint smart city task force is created for more close collaborations. And the seventh meeting of this joint smart city task force was held in Korea and Seoul, Korea from this Monday to yesterday. So I was a little bit busy to hosting that meeting in, in here. Okay, uh, let's look at the ITU recommendations for smart city KPI, key performance indicators. 
So ITU TKPIs have been developed to provide cities with the uh, consistent and standardized method to collect necessary data to measure the performance and progress uh, regarding the achieving sustainable development goal of UN or, and becoming a smarter city and becoming a more sustainable cities. So there are four ITUT recommendations for KPI for smart sustainable cities. Y.4900, Y.4901, and Y.4902, and finally Y.4903. So ITUT indicators are basically ICT related. The first one is Y.4900. So this uh, recommendation is the uh, first international standard, which is defining the definition of smart sustainable cities. So by this definition, smart sustainable city can be defined as your is your city use ICT technology to improve quality of life and efficiency of urban operations and services and also competitiveness while the ensuring that is it meets the needs of present and the future generations. So ITUT 4900 provide a overview of KPI in the context of smart sustainable cities. And here it categorized KPIs into six different dimensions, ICT, environmental sustainability, productivity, quality of life, and equity and equity and social inclusion, and finally physical infrastructures. In these six dimensions, a total uh, 37 sub-dimensions are defined in uh, ITUT Y.4900. For example, in ICT dimension, four sub-dimensions are ident uh, defined as network and access, service and information platform, and information security and privacy, and finally, electromagnetic field. And next one is ITUT Y.4901, which provides KPIs related to ICT adoption and use in the context of smart social cities. As already explained in the previous slide, the key, per key performance indicators in the context of smart sustainable city consist of 37 sub-dimensions as defined in y uh, Y.4900. Uh, among these 37 sub-dimensions, this recommendation Y.4901 define 48 core indicators and also 24 additional indicators in 20 sub-dimensions. This means that there is no indicators applicable to 17 sub-dimensions from ITUT Y.4900. So not all the 37 sub-dimensions sub are covered by uh, this 4901. Next one is ITUT Y.4902, which provides KPIs related to information and communication technology impact on the city sustainability in the context of smart sustainable cities. So among uh, the 37 sub-dimensions, this, re uh, this recommendation defines 30 core indicators and seven uh, additional indicators in 22 uh, sub-dimensions. So ab about 15 sub-dimension is not covered by this uh, recommendation Y.4902. Okay, uh, this slide shows the comparison between ITUT uh, Y.4901 and 4902. The dimension and subdimension in the left of the tables are defined in ITUT uh, Y.4900, as I already expressed. And as you can see, in some subdimension, there is no indicators defined in Y.4901 or Y.4902. In both recommendations, it uh, does not provide any uh, quantification method of each indicator. So they have only the, the definition of the indicators. So there is no uh, quantification method uh, uh, defined. The intention of KPI is to you know, publish the criteria to evaluate IC, ICT's contributions in making city more smarter and more sustainable, and also to provide the cities with the, uh, the methods for self-assessment. And um, it is desirable that each city can quantify continuously an achievement degree according to their goal. And last one from ITUT is WIDA 4903, uh, which uh, first outlined the KPIs for smart sustainable cities, and second 
establish the criteria to evaluate ICT's contribution in making cities smarter and more sustainable. And lastly, provide cities with the method for self-assessment in order to achieve the sustainable development goal of UN. For this, WIDA 4903 are categorized into three dimensions, economy, environment, and society and culture. In this three dimension, there are seven sub-dimensions and 22 categories, uh, the five, 55 core indicators and 36 advanced indicators are defined in 22 categories. Unlike WIDA 49001 and WIDA 4902, uh, WIDA 4903 provide quantification method, of, well, method for each indicators. Okay, and okay. So based on these uh, ITUT recommendations on uh, KPI, the United for Smart Sustainable City Initiative, U4SSC, uh, they have KPI project, uh, which is carried out since uh, uh, since the uh, KPI recommendation are uh, established. As of June 2022, about 47 cities are participating in uh, this project. As part of the reporting of city experience in the piloting the, the U4SSD KPI, the participating city will receive its verification report and also city snapshot. And this uh, city snapshot provides a, a visual overview on city's performance to benchmark in the KPI and verification reports contain the uh, verification result from assessing the validity of the data submitted by the city itself. Okay, and in addition to city snapshot and verification report, uh, cities can also request the ITUT uh, U4SSD Secretariat to assist to develop a city uh, fact sheet or a case study. And case study or fact sheet contain the detailed outcomes and achievements from implementing the U4SSD KPIs. Uh, this, uh, these reports highlight the city's uh, smartness and sustainability initiatives and how they have helped the city in achieving applicable SDG targets. So there are ideal tools to promote the city's smart strategies and to demonstrate its progress in reaching that the smart uh, sustainable development goals. As of year 2020, only four cities developed this, this kind of case study report. In year 2016 and 2017, Dubai and Singapore published case study reports based on the WIDA 4901 and WIDA 4902. And year 2018, Moscow uh, published case study reports based on the WIDA 4903. And this year, year 2022, Daegu City in Korea published case study reports based on WIDA 4903. Okay, this slide shows the how U4SSD project is carried out. So step one, to initiate the U4SSD KPI project, the city submit a, submit a letter of interest to the uh, ITU U4SSD secretariat. Then uh, the secretariat provides the city with the Excel template that contains all the KPIs to be collected on, and reported and assessed. The city filled, the, uh, filled in the template with the data and source information received from the various entity in the city. Once the data and sources have been uh, reported and collected and the verifier verifies the data and sources. Once the verification process has been completed, then verifier provide a verification report, which include the verification result, high level policy recommendation, and also high level suggestion for the improvement opportunities. Okay, and uh, until now we uh, review the ITUT KPIs, and from now on we will review ISO indicators. In ISO, there is a three international standard for city indicators: ISO 37120, ISO 37122, and 37123. And these international standards define the indicators across 19 themes, such as economy, education, energy, and telecommunication, and more. Okay, the first one is the ISO 37120. 
Uh, ISO 37120 defines indicators for city services and quality of life as a contribution to the sustainability of the city. It defines uh, 49 core indicators and 59 supporting indicators and 24 profile indicators in 19 same that we, uh, we already reviewed in previous uh, slide. Core indicators are considered as an kind of essential for steering and assessing the performance management of the city services and quality of life. Supporting indicators is indicator that are recommended to demonstrate performance in the delivering of city services and quality of life of citizens. And lastly, profile indicators is, is indicator that is recommended to provide basic uh, statistics and background information to help cities determine uh, to help the city determine which cities are of interest for uh, peer comparisons. And indicators in ISO 37120 can help cities to measure performance management of the city services and quality of life over time to learn from one another by uh, allowing comparison across a wide range of performance measures and to support uh, policy development and prioritized setting. And in conjunction with uh, ISO 37120, indicators in ISO 37122 are to support smartness in, in the city. So ISO 37122 define eight 80 uh, indicators for the, uh, uh, the smartness of the city. And also, the, in conjunction with the ISO 37120, indicators in ISO 37123 are to track and monitor progress toward a resilient city. So a uh, resilient city is able to prepare for the shocks uh, or stress from outside or recover from it or adapt to the adapt itself to the shocks and stresses. So ISO 37123 defines 67 indicators and nine uh, 67 indicators, core indicators and uh, nine uh, uh, additional indicators. And also some of the indicators are you know referenced from 37120. For example, for recreation, sports and culture, and waste water uh, refer to the indicators already defined in ISO 37120. So indicators in 37 ISO 37123 can help cities to prepare for recover from and adapt to shocks and stresses to learn from one another by allow, allowing comparison across a wide range of performance measures and by sharing the good practice on resilience of the city. Okay, based on the ISO 37120, the World, World Council on City Data, WCCD, operate a certification program. So in this certification program, uh, different, different levels of certifications are granted depending on how many indicators are applied. As we already saw, there is a 49 core indicators and 59 supporting indicators in uh, ISO 37120. So if a city uh, applies 45 core indicators and 49 to 59, 45 to 59 supporting indicators, then it will receive platinum level certifications. So, and there are certification programs for ISO 37122 and ISO 37123. So if a city is successfully uh, certified on ISO 37120, then city will be eligible for ISO 37122 and ISO 37123 certification also. And the last one is indicator standard from JTC1. So in JTC1, uh, working group 11 developed this one. So ISO IEC 30146 defined 56 indicators mainly related to ICT adoption and usage in smart cities. So figures in right side of slide show that the taxonomy of indicators in ISO IEC 30146. In, in, uh, based on this taxonomy, 56 indicators are classified as performance indicators and capability indicators in six different sub-dimensions and uh, 19 uh, categories. 
Uh, for my knowledge, there is no pilot project or certification program for the ISO IEC 30146 uh, yet. Okay, uh, until now, I, you know, introduced uh, different uh, standards for the international standard for the indicators or KPIs from ITO and ISO and JTC1. And I also uh, briefly introduced some kind of pilot project or certification program based on that indicator standard. So thank you for attention. And this is, this is it for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for your presentation. Uh, I would like to open to the floor first uh, for any question. Uh, I hope you can catch up with all the coding that uh, Mr. Lee have mentioned, the ITU 4000, uh, for 400, 4900, 4901, 4902, and 4903. Is it any question from the floor with regards to the Probably it's not only for the uh, standardization for on the smart city platform, but uh, overall on the uh, standardization on smart city, uh, smart city uh, in general. Ah, Mr. Dr. Park, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me say hello to my friend Cook back in Korea. <laughs> uh, Chunso, is it Chungbong? Chungbong. Next time, no free guy. Here. <laughs> uh, okay, what am I uh, Hello, Chunso. I have one question. Uh, thanks for introducing all the indicators and KPIs uh, to the APT members and their uh, colleagues in Malaysia. Uh, but here uh, we are gathered together to discuss not only smart city, but also some of a uh, platform and data, data integration, uh, those kind of things. But uh, we heard the general indicators and KPI from uh, IQ and JTS uh, ISO. But do they have any specific uh, performance indicators for? Um, smart city platform or data integration or, or those kind of things because we are gathered together uh, on that particular point okay uh unfortunately till my knowledge there is no dedicated indicators only for the data itself and also for the platform itself because it's generally you know Mainly, the focus of the indicator is, is to measure the impact of, you know, ICT technology to the city. So basically, uh, for the time being, there is no uh, dedicated indicator for data and, and platform. But uh, basically, this indicator is, you know, to, to measure, I mean, the, to quantify, quantify these indicators, you need to collect all the information from the, the city city so that that's the data that the city has to you know collect so in that sense the indicator itself is not for the data to measuring something on the data but to to measure that you you must you know, collect that the data all over the city so that that's the rel relevance uh with the data you are interested in and in these indicators i think Uh, thank you so much for answering the question. Uh, I just wonder whether uh, JT, uh, I, ISO and IT. Uh, they have some kind of uh, study uh, or recommendation. What would be the best way in building up a smart city platform or any way to integrate uh, different uh, data structure and data from the different agency and or uh, ministry. So do they have any of those kind of studies on that matter? Okay, uh, there is some jitter between your speaks, so I'm not sure I'm catching your 
question correctly, but okay, in ITUT, there is some kind of recommendation already published on the smart grid platform, mainly focusing on the interoperability between the different platforms. So there is something to why that 4200 and why 4201, that's the uh, relevant uh, recommendation already published. And for the data, okay, for the data, between between uh, IEC Systems Committee on Smart City and JTC1 SD41, now collaborating on the uh, city data models, just initiated, and they are inviting ITUT also join that uh, joint activities, but it's, it's just initial stage, so there's a not uh, many progress are made, but they uh, in their intention is to do some study on city data model or something. So maybe in a couple of years, you will get some result from that the joint work between the uh, IEC systems committee and uh, JTC1 SD41. And if possible, ITUT study group 20 will join to that uh, joint work. So you will get some uh, deliverable from them. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Pa. And uh, probably, uh, I, I just want to add uh, regarding Dr. Pa's question, uh, I think for the benefit of all, uh, the general participant, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the ISO uh, standardization, but uh, not uh, with regard to ITU. And uh, yes, there is one standard with regard to data integration for the smart city planning. Uh, called ISO 37166. Um, I, I, I think it's just been published this year. Uh, I want to verify with my colleague uh, from Department Standard of Malaysia, Mr. Mahade, but unfortunately, uh, he just left for another meeting. But uh, yes, I can confirm that it's a one published uh, standard. And yes, I, I do agree with uh, Mr. Lee's uh, opinion. There is a lot of uh, standard, uh, standard on Smart City Platform, which is uh, probably... Uh, under the new work item proposal as well, uh, NWIP, and also a few ad advanced stage of the uh, formulation. And uh, I do believe in uh, more upcoming years, we can see a lot of standard uh, with regard to uh, Smart City Platform. Um, okay, I would like to open to others for another question from the floor. Uh, I have one question uh, uh, to Mr. Lee. Uh, regarding the uh, slide number seven, um, slide number, uh, yeah, slide number seven, there is an ITUT recommendation for the smart city KPI. So I can see uh, there is no continuity uh, in terms of the metrics that have been uh, developed there. Uh, I was wondering uh, the reason uh, in the ITUT for. Uh, 4901 to uh, comparing compared to the 4902. Uh, for example, in the D1 category, D1 uh, dash one network and access, it was four indicators previously and now uh, it's named. So is it uh, is totally a new version or what is the reason be behind that? Okay, uh, could you repeat the, the, the main questions? So are you asking the what, uh, why yeah. some of the indicators are not defined in, in, in yes. uh, 49.01 and some, uh, some of the indicators are not defined in uh, 49.02, right? Yeah, uh, is it because of the different version, totally different version? No, it's not the, the matter of the different version. So. The 4901 is the key performance indicators related to use of information and communication technology. So it's the, uh, the indicators to measure the uh, use of the ICT technology. And 4902 is you know, something about the sustainability impact of uh, ICT technology. So it's different, to different topics. That's why it doesn't cover uh, everything in every you know, dimension or something. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, I would like to open to the floor again. If there is any 
anything that burning your head. Uh, my head is burning for the past two days. It's like a running on uh, uh, on the uh, very fast processor. Probably I never know. Can I? Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. From Nina. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, my name is Nina from Federal Department of Town and Country Planning, Malaysia. Just two simple question. Uh, I see that you have implemented three ISO on smart city: ISO three seven two zero, ISO three seven two two, and two three. Okay. Um, simple question: How do you certify all the cities? Do you have a, a special certificate body, or you use WCCD to do certification for Korea? And the second one: How do you promote all cities to come in to do the certification? Uh, could you please repeat the second question? The second question: How do you promote all cities in Korea to do the certification? Okay. Okay, uh, for the ISO 371 certification, uh, only WCCD is the platform to be uh, certified, so we have to utilize that. And from the uh, city in Korea, by themselves, they are trying to, you know, certify to uh, this program. For example, in, in case of Daegu Metropolitan City, they are uh, Certified by U4SSC this year and also get certification for the uh, ISO 37122 and 2223 at the same time. I mean, they will uh, get certified soon. They are trying to get that. So that, that's the current situations. And for the certification itself, uh, now for the for the other city, uh, there's a, the other standard, not the indicator things, but there's a ISO standard from uh, standard ISO 37106. So that's basically uh, you know, created based on the uh, British standard BSI. And based on that, they have some kind of uh, certification program operated by BSI. So there's some city uh, certified based on that. And also in, in national level, and in Ministry of Land and Transportation also have own you know, certification program, but that's not related to the those of, none of the, those international standards, but uh, in Korea, we have national or local standard, which are measuring some kind of the performance of the city, smartness and something. So for the time being, we have totally nine cities are certified by the Ministry of the Transport uh, Rent and Transportation, and that's the uh, that's not included in here, but that's the current, uh, current uh, certification uh, status in Korea. Is that answer for you? Yes, thank you, Mr. Lee. Okay, one last call for question from Mr. Lee. Okay, there is no question. I think uh, everyone uh, quite very understand on what Mr. Lee has shared. Okay, uh, one last one round of applause to Mr. Lee. So thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Okay, bye bye, everyone. Okay, uh, thank. Uh, we would like to move to the next, and I, I think the final speaker for today's and for the whole session. Uh, I would like to Im uh, invite, but before I invite Miss Mitterly Manon, uh, I would like to read some. Uh, Mr. Uh, Miss Mitterly Manon will, will speak on the standardization activities on indicators and certification for smart city. I think this is probably a continuity as well from what Mr. Lee has presented. So, uh, Miss Mitterly Manon uh, worked uh, as a project officer at the International Telecommunication Union, ITU in the domain of standardization uh, for a new and emerging technologies. Uh, she served as, a, as the advisor to the ITU, WMO, UNEP, focus group on artificial intelligence for natural disaster management as well. And I guess uh, he has an expert, expertise in uh, IoT uh, and smart cities and communities uh, as well, uh, environment, climate change, and circular economy. So. Previously, she worked with the standard at the standardization lead at Mandate International for various EU Horizon uh, 2020. 
So I would like to to invite Miss Mitterly Mellon, uh, whether I pronounce your, na your name right or, or not, please advise. Uh, so I would like to invite you to present uh, your, your presentation. The floor is yours. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for the kind invitation. I'm hoping that you all are able to hear me clearly. And yes, my name is Maitli Menon. So I'll share my screen. So please do let me know if you're able to, um, able to view it. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it's good. Uh, okay, so uh, let me go into slide share mode. Are you able to see my screen clearly with? Okay, I'm assuming that's a yes. So um, hello and welcome everyone. I heard from the moderator that I'm the last speaker for this event. So once again, thank you very much for the kind invitation. Um, Dr. Lee already gave some insight into the u KPIs, its application and the overall benefits for standards. Um, for smart, sustainable cities. I will try and tie into how this fits in with the ITUTSG20, probably provide you with a bit more of background on that. And you might even find some of the answers to the questions that were posed to Dr. Lee. So just to tie in any loose ends or any questions that might come up uh, to you. So it's my pleasure to be here with you today and have the opportunity to speak to you and provide you with a sneak peek into the u 4 ssc initiative or the United for Smart Sustainable Cities initiative for those of you who haven't heard about it. I'll also uh, elaborate on how it, this initiative is now playing a crucial role in accelerating digital transformation for cities. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term, we'll also come, uh, come to that in a bit. So first off, just to set the tone and the context, cities today, we're facing a plethora of challenges in a variety of domains, including environment, the economy, as well as social sectors. And these cha these challenges, they can span from the ongoing greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions that are um, emitted by cities or traffic congestion, as well as financial constraints, pollution, increasing energy use, water usage, and of course, uh, the pandemic, which uh, also the world faced. And in light of this pandemic, it's made addressing these challenges through digital transformation a bit more urgent. And in this context, digital transformation and the use of digital technologies and information communication technologies, they can be leveraged as tools by cities to transform how city services are provided, monitor and uh, measure environmental impact, increase, uh, increase road and public transport efficiency, improve network logistics and provide the basis for new businesses to grow and um, new business models to come up as well. So in terms of how ITU can support this digital transformation, so for those of you who don't know, the International Telecommunication Union or the ITU, we have a dual role in the UN system. We're the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information Communications Technologies, or ICT, and we also double up as a standards developing organization like the ISO and the IEC. So in this context, the ITU has a very vital role in establishing the trajectory for standardization, especially for digital transformation in cities. And in this context, our work significantly contributes to the implementation of smartness, sustainability, related international commitments such as the Sustainable Development Goals um, and the New Urban Agenda, which was laid forth by the UN Habitat in 2016. And through our various activities, standardizations, publications, and global initiatives, uh, the ITUT has been helping cities across the world uh, by envisioning, by helping them to envision their digital transformation pathways, identify the challenges en route to becoming smart and more sustainable, find concrete technological solutions by employing global best practices, providing expert guidance, and becoming be better prepared and more resilient in the post-pandemic world uh, through the use uh, and leveraging uh, digital technologies. So in the context of ITUT standardization work, uh, Dr. Lee did speak about this a bit, but just to provide you with some more context. 
the ITUT study group 20 on IoT smart cities and communities. Uh, it's the main technical group that's responsible for the development of standards and guidelines related to IoT and smart cities and communities. And through this group, ITU has been developing standards in a variety of areas um, uh, to do with interoperability of technology, infrastructure, adoption of new and emerging technologies like AI, master planning, guidance for city leaders, how to promote city stakeholder engagement, health, accessibility, data management, and processing. So the ITUT study group 20 had established a focus group on data processing and management for IoT and smart cities. So a lot of that work from that focus group has now moved to um, the study group 20. Um, and it also provides um, studies as well as guidance for emergency responses, uh, transportation, disaster responses, agriculture. So the focus group, uh, there's there's another focus group which falls under the remit of SG20, which um, I manage on uh, digital agriculture. So that's also a vertical that the SG20 is looking at through the focus group. So next uh, we come on to the complementary activity. Uh, which complements the standardization, the core standardization work carried out within the remit of SG20, which is the United for Smart Sustainable Cities. So it's a very unique platform that it's, it's unique globally uh, because there's no other platform which functions the way it does. It's supported by 18 uh, United Nations agencies and programs, and it's an open global platform which advocates for public pol policy and encourages the use of digital technologies, information communication technologies to help urban stakeholders ease the transition to smart and sustainable cities. It's an open platform, so um, unlike you know uh, more closed forums where standards might be developed, Anyone can join the U4SSC, contribute, learn. So it's a great platform for knowledge sharing and exchange. The U4SSC has various thematic groups through which it's it conducts its work, it develops frameworks, action plans, technical specifications, case studies, also presents policy guidance to cities to become smarter and more sustainable to accelerate digital transformation. Um, and it's also, as I mentioned, it's an excellent platform to have international di dialogue. So please feel free to join um, join us there. And in terms of city platforms, which is uh, one of the topics of this uh, of this session, we do have a dedicated thematic group on city platforms, which is itself subdivided into, I think, four working groups, which covers a variety of topics, including interoperability for a smart city platforms, architecture, uh, smart tourism, um, so please do check it out. A lot of these publications are already available. So next, that brings me to uh, the hot topics and the recent publications that U4SSC has um, has on the block, and these uh, are in public health. So that's also something that was developed by the thematic group on city platforms. Um, so I encourage you to visit our website and take a look at them. They're freely available on the U4SSC webpage. And so they're available in two forms. You can either download it or you can have it in a flipbook form on the, on the U4SSC webpage. Next, we'll move on to a bit about what Dr. Lee spoke about. So it's achieving smartness and sustainability and the eventual use of the, the KPIs. So the way the ITU views the smart and sustainable city transition is that it's a journey and it's not an end destination. So every city will be in a different point in the smart city trajectory. So it's it's about progress, it's about moving and learning throughout the process. And for this, cities have to be uh, resilient, they have to be agile, and they have to be focusing on a variety of practices and policies which allow them to do so. And in this regard, there are certain ways in which the journey can progress. So the first step would be to, of course, set realistic targets, goals that can be measured and tracked over, tacked over time. And then, of course, second is the transition to smart, sustainable cities. It will require the exploration of new data sources, technologies, and tools. And for this, cities should be open to exploring more tools, solutions, and new data sources that could help them take data-driven decisions. Second is, of course, um, the building of a smart city or a smart city transformation. It has to be an inclusive process. So for this, inhabitant engagement or citizen engagement is, is vital. It's pivotal. So um, 
that's another aspect. And then the next step would, of course, be partnership development, which um, urges the urban stakeholders to work with the, the private sector as well, and also civil society, academia to foster innovation and um, draw and deliver other solutions. And last, uh, and sorry, the second last is impact assessment, which brings about a need to measure impact of smart sustainable city projects to see how effective it is, whether the goals have been achieved, et cetera, in alignment with international instruments like the sustainable development goals. And in this space, um, standards, the ITUT KPIs, uh, the smart city KPIs will also play a very pivotal role. And last but not the least, of course, in any smart city trans transformation, uh, financial aspects also need to be taken into account. So for this, um, there needs to be an innovative financing mechanism, which is also something that the U4SSC is working on through one of its thematic groups, and we'll hopefully have the deliverable on that soon. So a lot has happened in the last few years in the smart and sustainable city arena, and the cities across the globe, they have um, they have now experienced with their smart city transitions, they have tested solutions, they have piloted KPIs, and this is also a way of bringing together everyone and learning from each other. So that's another platform that U4SSC provides to have this kind of dialogue and discussion. So this is something that Dr. Lee covered, but then I will still just, just to emphasize on this. So the United for Smart Sustainable Cities, based on the KPIs that were developed within uh, ITUT study group 20, we have the Y.903. We have the we have refined and we have the U4SCC KPIs for smart sustainable cities. And these KPIs essentially help cities evaluate the impact and contribution of uh, digital technologies, of ICTs, and making cities more smarter and more sustainable. And these KPIs also provide cities with the means for self-assessment and for monitoring their progress in terms of their own intrinsic smart city goals. So it's not, the idea of these KPIs is not to pit cities against each other, but for cities to assess their own journey and benchmark their own uh, practices. So for now, uh, city leaders worldwide have benefited from implementing these KPIs, and these KPIs have enabled uh, cities to measure their progress over time. And they've also helped lay out a strategic plan and measurement towards uh, you know, specific given cities' individual goals. Currently, we do have nearly 200 cities that have enrolled in the U4SSC um, KPI program. Some of them Dr. Lee has already highlighted. We have Singapore, we have Daegu, we have Dubai, we have Valencia, and we have many more. Um, in terms of how the KPI description works, the, the rationale was, of course, to choose the indicator and then how the indicators should be interpreted, and then what benchmarking trends would be desirable for urban stakeholders. And then, of course, uh, whether it's easy, whether there's an existing methodology for calculating the value to be reported and the potential sources of data that the city might have. So these are some of the things that were kept in mind when these KPIs were developed, and these are some of the aspects that have been covered in the standard. There's also a collection methodology for these KPIs, which has been developed by U4SSC, which is also available in case you're interested into how these KPIs, it also provides a narrative on how these KPIs came to be. In terms of reporting, there are different kinds of outputs that can come about from the KPI pilot project. First is a city snapshot, which will provide um, a more of a visual overview of the u KPI performance based on um, global benchmarks uh, for, the for, the, for the city undertaking undertaking the, the analysis. And then next we have verification report, which uh, provides a series of conclusions of the impact of the project and how the city fares. And then we have fact sheets, which will elaborate and analyze the results of the KPI implementation in any given city, so it will be shorter. And then last but not the least, we have elaborate case studies, uh, which will detail different aspects of a city's journey in implementing the KPIs and in that context becoming smarter or more sustainable. So we've had over the course of the last few years, we have had 
a few case studies. We have had several city snapshots, verification reports, and fact sheets. One thing that I would like to mention, which I think even Dr. Lee stressed upon, was the case study for Singapore, which documented the key findings from the first year of collaboration between Singapore's Smart Nation Initiative and the ITU. And it also highlighted uh, the activities carried out by the different entities to support uh, Singapore's Smart Nation initiative. The report also demonstrated uh, the city's ongoing development and progress as a united for smart, sustainable city, smart, sustainable city. And it, in that context, we saw it as a vital tool to uh, for cities to be able to market their efforts and to showcase the, the strides that they've made over the course of um, over the course of the years. So now that we've come on to when we've stressed on what the u 4 KPIs can be, I would like to also highlight the advantages. So as you can see, participating in uh, a city, participating, uh, the participating city receives a host of information through reports, uh, benchmarking tools that will help them uh, on their smart and sustainable city journey. But on top of that, there's also certain advantages to using these KPIs. First, it's, um, First, it's like the only international standard which is supported by 18 United Nations agencies and programs. It is a strong policy tool for um, for cities. It also provides a general screening of the city that allows them to identify the key areas of improvement and gives the city the opportunity to assess their own progress. And it also allows for cities to better develop their strategies for the management of a city. And last but not the least, it helps cities um, achieve the sustainable development goals. So the sustainable development goals, I think it has 169 targets. So all those targets are automatically embedded in the u 4 KPIs. So that's an advantage. Um, and in terms of this is something that we already covered in the previous slides, but just to just to stress on them a little more. So in terms of how the U4SSA KPI works, first you'll have the reporting, which will publish a key analysis, the lessons learned, that's also a key part of the case studies, which is something that other cities can also learn from and take home. And then we have benchmarking. So cities can benchmark their progress, what to do if their best practices that they would like to highlight. That's a good way. The u 4 KPIs are a good channel to do so. And then we also have a visual representation, which forms an integral part of the implementation process. And we see it as a very integral visual representation of what areas need to be covered. So in one view, the city will have an idea of what aspects they need to focus on over the course of the next decade or years, et cetera. Um, then we, within the u 4 framework, we also have the u 4 country hub. So the first u 4 country hub was, is, has been set up in Vienna, Austria, and it's hosted by the Austrian Economic Center. So the u 4 uh, hub is also another very unique element within uh, the u 4 and it provides a unique platform at the regional level to accelerate cooperation between public and private sector. And it also helps facilitate the digital transformation in cities and communities while enabling technology and knowledge transfer. And uh, what we've observed by the excellent work of our first u 4 hub that is also able to connect the private sector ranging from startups to multinationals and universities. So it's, it's truly one of a kind in terms of the kind of traction it's able to, it has gained over the years. In terms of how to get involved, so there are, of course, uh, two ways that we see it. So first is to support cities um, implement and use the u 4 uh, sc KPIs, and the second is to be able to test and verify the applicability of the KPIs worldwide. So we also see the u 4 sc KPIs as a very agile tool. So it's, of course, that cities should be able to benefit from the KPIs, but on the other hand, we would also like to keep the KPIs up to date. So any feedback that's received from the cities in terms of, um, you know, knowledge gained or insights during the implementation and even after, that's also taken as feedback to uh, streamline the KPIs in the future, so that it, there's a feed, there's a clear feedback loop and there's no stagnation on either side. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Uh, once again, thank you very much for the opportunity um, of joining you all remotely today. So with that, um, I hand the floor back to the moderator. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, Mitali. Uh, I would like to open to the floor for any question with regard to United for Smart Sustainable City that have been presented by Mitali. Should I go first? Okay, uh, Ms. Lee, I have uh, a few questions actually, but uh, the first one, uh, with regards to the reporting of the U United for Smart Sustainable Cities KPI, there is a verification report uh, being prepared. Uh, may I know which agency uh, verify all the data, whether it is ITO or any other agency like uh, in ISO is called uh, a certification body or CP, or is there who's verified this report? So there's no process of certification yet, but in terms of verification, ITU, we have an independent auditor doing that. So it's completely independent of the ITU to ensure transparency in the progress uh, process for both the city as well as ITU. It's done by an independent uh, auditor. Of course, I can, um, I think I do have a couple of slides, which I could have probably shown, but in the interest of time, I didn't. So all the data, et cetera, is verified by an independent auditor. It depends, of course, on which stream the city chooses. So some cities just choose to get the fact sheet and the uh, verification report. Some people, some cities might go in for the case study. So it depends on what the city chooses at that point, but it's all independently done um, at, at this point. So there is uh, no ultimate uh, findings on any verification reports. For example, uh, you are now 80% from reaching a smart, sustainable cities. So no, we don't provide grades. Uh, it, it's for the city to use the verification report of the city fact sheet. As I mentioned, there's a, and there's a map which provides a visual representation on what aspects could be improved with respect to what indicator. So that should provide a sneak peek or an idea for the city to what they on what they need to work on, but there's no grading because when a grading comes, that's sort of pitting each city against each other, and every city is different. It will have different socioeconomic dynamics. It will be in a different region, so that would be uh, that would be a very tricky proposition <laughs> if we started grading the cities through the KPIs. Right. Okay. Uh, any other question from the floor? Any other question? Um, um, I would like to ask, Uh, I saw one slide mention that uh, United for Smart Sustainable City have a footprint in about 150 cities. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is, uh, is it open to any, uh, how, how do you open for the uh, collaboration, whether it is open to the uh, national government or it is uh, to the regional government or to the local government? So. Uh, it is, uh, I'm not so sure how, how it is uh, being uh, conducted, but uh, whether if we want to, any cities in Malaysia probably, if uh, would like to collaborate with the ITU, whether they need to go through the, um, any consider as the state members to the ITU, or can you please explain? So I think Dr. Lee elaborated on this, which is why I left it out. So it's usually it's with the city level representation because the work is going to be conducted at the city level. But of course, in cases like Singapore, there might be a, a, you know, a certain liaison or coalition there. So that's, that's a different situation. But it's usually at the city level. As he mentioned, the city will send a letter to the ITU expressing interest and we will take it on from there. Of course, the national government, they will be informed 
because it's not going to be a unilateral process because we might need data which is probably only found at the national level so the city in that case will anyway have to probably liaise so it's to keep everyone involved but the initiation of the process will have to be made at the city level to see whether they would like to leverage the KPIs and if so how and okay thank you very much for your clarification no question from the floor one last round okay uh, I think uh, we give uh, one round of applause to the uh, Mitali thank you very much Mitali for your presentation Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity of having IT here. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, we have a short break. I don't want to wrap up uh, because session four is a very a simple uh, session. I have only four uh, two presenters, and I would like to reserve this for the uh, our conclusions remark in the uh, closing uh, session. So with that, I pass back to the uh, moderator, MC. Thank you, Mr. Mike Parabi Yusuf, for moderating the last session for APT Regional Workshop on Smart City Platforms. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as a token of gratitude and appreciation, we are pleased to invite Dr. John Bong Park, Director of Project Development of South Pacific Telecommunity APT, to deliver the gift. Please welcome Mr. Maparabi Yusuf, Mark Yusuf, Head of Smart City Unit Town and Country Premier Malaysia. Representatives from Mr. Juan Silk Lee, Director of Electronic and Telecommunication Research Institute. Maybe Mr. Kiwi. And representative from Ms. Mitili Menon, Project Officer, International Telecommunication Union. Thank you, Dr. John Bompa, Director of Project Development of South Pacific Telecommunity for delivering the gift. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now take a 30 minutes for a coffee break. And I wish uh, to remind everyone that the next session will start at 4 p.m. and will continue for the closing session. Thank you. Recording stopped. Oh, 15 minutes on the oh, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, jump, okay, jump, okay, jump, okay, jump, Marilah makan cepat nanti boleh makan. Ya, ya. 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 
sekarang ini semua jadi isu yang apa yang dia akan untuk jadi GPN mungkin GPN sebenarnya saya nak pergi istirahat sebentar tapi GPN sebenarnya akan jadi isu bila dia pada sebenarnya dia isu yang memang jadi isu
Ladies and gentlemen, the next station is going to start soon, and please be seated.
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the closing session of APT Regional Workshop on Smart City Platform 2022. Recording in progress. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for staying throughout for two days program of the APT Regional Workshop on Smart City Platform and give a round of applause. Your commitment are much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go for closing remarks, I would like to invite Dr. John Brown Park, Director of Project Development Asia Pacific Telecommunity APT to summarize the presentation from the station one yesterday. Without further ado, please be invite Dr. John Brown Park. Uh, thank you, Dalia. Uh, so this session will wrap up some of the discussion we had uh, to, for two days. So my, my turn is session one. Uh, as you understand, uh, session one touched upon policy and strategy on smart city platform uh, by inviting three uh, prominent speakers from Korea, uh, Malaysia, and Thailand. Uh, Dr. Park from Korea uh, underscored the importance of the strategy uh, which is, uh, should be coherent, and he introduced the smart city data platform and strategy for data. And examples such as Daegu City's uh, data hub was introduced. Uh, Mr. Abdullah from Malaysia introduced the visionary uh, Malaysian initiative to build up Malaysian urban observatory uh, to facilitate the decision making process in Malaysia. Uh, once it is completed uh, successfully in 2025, uh, we believe it would be a good storytelling uh, project to APT members. Uh, Dr. Uh, Apinat uh, from Thailand introduced the smart city policy and current status of Thailand. He also shared the smart city data platform in Thailand uh, with some examples. Uh, it was a great opportunity for me uh, to learn something from uh, those three countries. Uh, with the three eminent speakers. Uh, so I'd like to appreciate the organizer for allowing me to be the moderator. Uh, I do believe everyone has their own takeaways uh, from this uh, session one, but personally I have uh, identified three takeaways for myself. Uh, number one, uh, policy and strategy should lay out the blueprint uh, to all stakeholders uh, to work together to where all uh, uh, move to the same direction. Uh, in order to do this, uh, in drafting phase, uh, public consultation with various stakeholders to understand the needs and views and to show the goal as paramount important. We need to provide a coherent uh, in, uh, in policy uh, during the implementation phase. Uh, Takeaway number two, uh, one interesting point we found uh, during the discussion, uh, there are similarities in components or dimensions between Malaysia and Thailand. Uh, Malaysia, they have uh, seven um, uh, components in their smart city uh, framework, and Thailand also seven has seven uh, dimensions. Uh, smart government or smart governance, uh, smart living, uh, smart economy, smart mobility, and smart people, and smart environments are common. Whereas uh, Malaysia has uh, smart digital infrastructure, and uh, Thailand has a smart energy. Those are the differences. Uh, but I do believe this provides some good um, clue or hint for APT members who are now drafting or formulating their own national plan or strategy. Um, so those are the uh, maybe uh, basic elements for the uh, uh, stats. And uh, takeaway number three, uh, although we sh uh, should understand the difference in federal structure in each nation, but a centralized model introduced by, by Thailand, um, it would be one of the good models 
uh, local authority proposed their plan to the federal government, and the federal government reviewed all the proposals and provide some uh, guidance and some budget uh, for the local authority to deploy uh, the smart cities. Uh, this process would ensure the interoperability and data sharing and scalable system uh, integration, so and so on. So it would be a good benchmark model for APT member countries. Uh, those are the, my three takeaways uh, from the session one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jung Bong Park. Now I would like to invite Mr. Ki Hoon Kim from Telecommunication Technology Association to give a short overview and summarize the station two and three. Please welcome. Thank you. Uh, I have to summarize both session two and uh, session three. So I will try to summarize them uh, comprehensively in, into one rather than uh, introduce them one by one. So in session two and session three, uh, smart city platform as well as data integration and sharing, uh, which is a key element of the smart city platform were discussed. And my summary is as follows. Uh, firstly, uh, various services are being developed under the name of Smart City in the field of disaster and environment, uh, the, the city management and security and transportation, etc. And the key element in providing this service is platform and data. Uh, it is it was recognized that many government and cities uh, have developed smart city platforms and provide services based on data to make their citizens' life more convenient and safe. Uh, in addition, efforts to provide more innovative and creative services uh, have continued recently with the development, development of uh, big data analysis technologies and new technologies such as AI and digital twin, etc. Uh, in this process, uh, the central government has a plan to collect and link data generated in individual cities to provide national administration or public services, but the limitations of storing, utilizing data generated in each city were identified. Yeah. Uh, data interoperability and data ownership and collaboration between related organizations and cities and budget were presented as important challenges in data sharing and utilization and integration. Uh, not only the government policy drive, but also the participation of citizens and communities at the bottom up level is very important. Uh, another issue was how to motivate the data sharing of related public organizations and public sectors and private sector. In case of data interoperability, some technical approaches such as standards can be one of solutions and standard based big data management and platform development are basically prerequisites for data sharing and utilize, uh, utilization. And lastly, the importance of standardization that can be used by countries in SFS region such as data set and metadata was also recognized. Uh, taking this opportunity, once again, I'd like to deliver my gratitude to all the speakers and uh, particip participants. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. ki Hong King. Last but not least, without any further delay, next I would like to call upon Mr. Mat Fabi Yusuf and Mat Yusuf, Head of Smart City Town and Country Planning Malaysia. We give a short overview and summarize the session for please welcome thank you very much um, again uh, assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon um, i do believe uh, my session is the most uh, easiest uh, session because i only have two speakers uh, uh, from etri and from itu so basically uh, i would like to conclude in uh, two perspectives one is uh, from the session itself 
I think uh, the two speakers have made a salient point on the uh, United uh, United for su Smart Sustainable Cities under the ITU. So uh, these um, tools by the ITU, uh, you, you for SSC, uh, is vital uh, in evalu evaluate the smart, uh, smart city uh, level. Uh, and um, I do believe uh, a lot of sharing uh, that have been made, especially by Mr. Lee. So Mr. Lee have highlighted on the, I think the basic understanding on how the standard should be looked from the stand standpoint of the city managers, which is strategics, um, uh, process and also technical. So I do believe, especially for the our colleagues in Malaysia, uh, when we when we talk about standardization, it's always uh, I would like to use this Bahasa Malaysia word, the legal man. Bila when we heard this word ISO, or oh, is always uh, uh, with regards to uh, we are always uh, relate to the uh, ISO documentation, which is. Uh, 9,300 uh, standards. So, but actually, standardization in smart city is one of the enablers uh, to uh, make sure the uh, success, uh, successfulness of the uh, smart city implementation. So, um, a lot of uh, ITU tools, uh, for example, why uh, 4,901 4, 4, until 4,903. There is a lot of different uh, set of uh, indicators have been lined up uh, to evaluate. And I would like to encourage, uh, despite we are more aligning to the ISO standardization, but however, uh, I think probably because ITU is more a uh, specialized agency on telecommunication, so our local government are, are not so exposed to this agency and all the tools are under ITU. But I think, uh, this is probably a part and parcel of the of the whole uh, holistic uh, perspective on the standardization that the city level should explore in this ITU perspective as well. Uh, apart from that, um, this is my, I think, um, for the past three days, not only for session four, what I learned is actually smart city, smart city platform is very vital and provide a new value. Uh, one of the value is smart city platform can perform many functions. These include analytics, asset monitoring, performance management, decision making, in fact, presentation component. Uh, when we want to present uh, anything to our uh, leaders and et cetera. Uh, at its core, the smart city platform should include a common environment for visualization, advanced application analytics and contextualized data. End user, especially the uh, city managers, are investing in smart city platform, not just for the sake of adopting new technologies, but because these solutions offer considerable economics, environmental and social value to the cities and communities. I think this is a very important uh, to the city managers. The third one is city managers around the world are launching a smart city initiative to improve the efficiency, effectiveness, and attractiveness of their infrastructure and services. And uh, the new technology development are central and vital to this effort, but require appropriate selection and implementation. Uh, we have listened to a lot of um, solutions by many uh, experts, and I do believe uh, every city, especially in Malaysia, have their uniqueness and uh, their local context. So uh, it is very important uh, to have uh, essential evaluation uh, and try to tailor to the needs of the city uh, uh, for the implementation of the smart city platform. And lastly, I think we could not, could not run away from the, uh, when we talk about smart city platform, the element of cybersecurity uh, and probably the personal data protection is maybe included uh, capabilities to manage device systems and network uh, network for the uh, smart city infrastructure. And uh, from the standardization standpoint, I believe uh, we should look more for more sustainable standardization. Uh, I, actually, I was hoping that uh, my colleague, Mr. Mahade was around from Department Standard of Malaysia, uh, especially for the smart city platform. 
uh, regardless, uh, is from the viewpoint of, in the viewpoint of the financial viability, uh, we talk a lot about investing um, the capex for the smart city platform. Technology transfer, uh, we can plug in any technology from Korea, but I think uh, the most important thing, whether it is uh, sustainable for us to, to use, to look into the standpoint of technology transfer and also the scalability uh, and etc. So uh, as a conclusion, I do believe uh, we already established the National Standard Committee on Smart City and uh, I'm very glad that the chairman of the uh, and, uh, technical committee, Mr. Hakim from MCMC is around as well. So I think we can uh, develop more uh, standard, especially with regard to smart city platform. And I do believe uh, Datuk Ni as well under the Malaysia Technical Standard Forum Sindiran Berhad under MCMC have also be, uh, started uh, the uh, drafting and I think uh, probably at the final stage for now. And I think we can use this as a basis uh, to develop more uh, established uh, standard uh, for a smart city platform, especially in Malaysia. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fabian for the summarization on station for just now. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we have been waiting for is finally here. It is with great honor to invite Dr. John Brown Park, Director of Project Development Asia Pacific Telecommunity, to deliver his closing remark. Please be invited, Dr. John Brown Park. Uh, thank you, Lida. Uh, actually, my colleague Parabi already mentioned a good thing and to wrap up everything. So I don't wish to say much, but uh, as requested, I do do something, but in a short period of time. Please bear with me. Uh, we have come to the end of the, this workshop uh, for two days and a number of sessions. Uh, on behalf of organizers, uh, I'd like to thank you so much for your contribution and for your engagement. Uh, throughout the workshop. I hope this workshop was a rewarding experience to all of you. Uh, as we just wrap up uh, previously, I don't wish to uh, reiterate what we have spoken, but I'd like to highlight some of the points we discussed uh, throughout the workshop. Uh, there are not so many, please don't be surprised. Um, the workshop, I'll share the view that policy and strategy are quite important. Uh, at the same time, uh, actionable and durable policy and strategy are also important as well. Uh, that was number one. And number two, we have learned um, that there are many use cases or best practices of smart city platform and sharing those information uh, to others would help uh, to save their time to build up or a streamline the process in their uh, adaptation. And number three, uh, all we understand the sensitivity of the data ownership. Uh, there is no question on that matter. But we also see the paramount benefit in sharing the data as Korean, uh, Korea uh, presented that uh, the data-driven smart city or big data analytics. Uh, the speakers encourage the government and stakeholders to take a proper action for the policy, a data policy and compliance with the policy while ensuring interoperability, privacy, and security as probably mentioned. Uh, APT uh, would work with partners to identify where is the best practice in uh, data integration and data sharing so that uh, uh, we ask APT members uh, to have some benchmark. Number four, uh, we just uh, finished the session on standards or guideline. This would be a good tool to set out the common rule uh, for all the stakeholders. And we learned that there are many, there is some gap. Uh, there are uh, further approves needed in the area of smart city platform and the data integration and sharing. So we need to hold our hands together uh, for the betterment of this area. And the number five, smart city is one of the key elements in smart people, I'm sorry, 
smart people is one of the key elements in smart city. Uh, is Malaysia and Thailand also prioritized as one of the key components of uh, dimensions? But I think we need to ask a question to ourselves. Uh, whether the relevant activities in smart cities or relevant budget or smart people are sufficient enough? We have some short a question to uh, during the audience uh, during the uh, presentation uh, people are the key uh, in smart cities i do believe uh, awareness of our uh, program and the capacity building to share the goals and understand others should be prioritized in our projecting process in smart city uh, in this regard uh, those kind of workshop would have a meaningful to share the voices, uh, to share the information, then to identify possible common solution uh, through uh, this uh, collaborate uh, through the collective wisdom. APT is hopeful to provide similar events uh, sooner uh, on once again. Uh, having said this, uh, I'd like to thank you once again to Plan Malaysia, uh, uh, Dr. Alias, and my friend uh, Asabi for their uh, wonderful arrangement. And then I wish to, uh, wish to acknowledge uh, our colleague from Malaysia behind the scene, working very hard. So I'd like to invite all of you to give a uh, warm round of applause. And then I also acknowledge the kind contribution from the uh, government of Korea and the ETA and their eminent speakers. Please give one more round of applause too. Korea. Okay, uh, those who have travel uh, to attend this workshop, as always we said, uh, safe travel back. And, uh, and then uh, please note that we have another activity tomorrow, which is a site visit. So please don't forget. Uh, although our workshop finished today, uh, I'd like to reiterate that uh, the collaboration between the Republic of Korea and Malaysia uh, doesn't stop. It will be continued uh, throughout this year and next year. Uh, tomorrow, right after the study visit, uh, there will be an, uh, a bilateral meeting between Korea and uh, Malaysia to discuss about some technical uh, challenges and so, some solutions. And then uh, Republic of Korea will also invite uh, Plan Malaysia next year to Korea to have some technical workshop and study visit. Uh, so we need to discuss that matter uh, 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 tomorrow. Uh, hope this collaboration will continue until the moment all people here gather together, uh, smart people. Uh, including myself, I try to be smart. Once again, thank you so much, and terima kasih. Thank you, Dr. John Bonta, for the closing remark to be very. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we leave this hall, let's capture this memorable moment through a group photo. And I would like to invite all the participants to come forward and stay in a big group for the photographer to capture this moment. Please move forward. <laughs> Recording stopped. Okay, everyone, please move forward to the final stage.
Mr. Thumbs up, please. Oh, please. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Thumbs up. Another one, thumbs up. Be back. Thank you everyone for your cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there are a few announcements here. Just to inform for tomorrow technical meeting and technical visit is for international delegates only. For the reason